hello everybody and welcome to the 26th episode of the hsbg podcast i'm your host educate cons i'm here with my constant co-host shady bunny shady bunny how you doing i'm all right cons i'm all right <laughs> so something happened yeah, so. how are you i don't know something happened you know you know it's funny, funny i do this every time but i feel like i catch you off guard <laughs> every time i say like oh you know, it's not like ah, Rams are great. I mean, it's like, well, let me think about it. <laughs> uh, how um, am I? Yeah, I, I do that too sometimes. Sometimes people ask me how I am, and I like I pause for like ten to twenty seconds, like actually contemplating life's existence. Let's put your fingers in for. Mm -hmm. How am I? How am I? Hmm. What? We've got a big podcast today, a big patch today. Well, a couple of days ago, but we're talking about it now. And uh, I mean, we could definitely go into it. I mean, we have the weekly overview, but let I want to skip it. I know we always talk about it. But it's good, hectic, a lot of changes. Da da da. You know, here a lot of content that we that usually here we're gonna move to the patches and uh, the new card discussion because that's mostly what. We will be doing today, but yeah, let's get right yeah. into it. First things first, there's a patch coming out today, not today, but two days ago. Patch 21.1 includes the minion revamp. They've changed, I believe, 37 minions. Crazy stuff. Didn't remove, didn't touch tokens at all. You know, didn't touch some other things, but hey, crazy chains. And we shall be talking about them soon uh we're not we're not going to cover every single card today because i don't have four hours i'm technically traveling today so you know i don't have the time but we're going to be talking about um dra demons which are dragons elementals and mechs today and we'll cover everything else hopefully next week unless I find it's also like there's there's so much to cover. I don't know if we'll fill it, fit it in next week, but theoretically. But I think we're covering a lot of the uh, more dominant, more meta, yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah. This this today. So you should you should have a good overview of uh, what's going on. Maybe not what to do, but what's going on <laughs> after this podcast. So uh, let's just get uh, right into it. I think real quick, we do have two new heroes as well that we do need to cover. Um, as well, we're going to start off with uh, Carola Ro Rome. Um, so I've played this hero a couple of times. Like, I've really only had like one day to play uh, so far, so I haven't like seen every single card or everything. But I got to play this hero a couple of times. I think this hero is um, it's all right. Like, there's some synergies that use buffing. Well, I mean, well. <laughs> So basically, if you have a whelp smuggler, this thing could be okay, right? That's the only reason I was looking at this hero power. Be like, yeah, I guess it could buff the dragons and proc whelp, so maybe it's okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say that at this uh, this whole discussion of the meta might be obsolete in like a month when they they patch. I hope they no. I, I hope it is a week or less. Yeah. I, I cannot imagine. Okay, so for for anyone who hasn't played yet, there are some like very, very broken interactions. And then there are also just cards that don't work properly that just do numbers wrong. You know what? Like, yeah, go ahead. I think we should talk about Welp as the first minion. Like, yeah, let's just yeah. let's just like and, and explain. Then, and then we'll go yeah. everything else because, I, like, I I feel like with every single card, it's gonna be like, well, this interacts yeah. with whelp in in this way. That's how I'm gonna be looking at. It. So let's just actually start with whelp. But let's talk about the um. Should we talk about the whelps before we even talk about the minions? I mean the heroes. Oh, the heroes. Yeah. I. I... I mean, yeah, yeah, Panda has some really cool <laughs> moments with Mouth as well. Where you're like, oh, bananas, fuck you, yeah, let's go. <laughs> like, Mukla for a turn, you're super happy. <laughs> That's actually kind of ridiculous, but I, I think that is, that makes a lot more sense in... Um, yeah. The in culprit, the, the, the cart that is shaping the whole meta if dragons are in. Yeah, it, so actually, before we even talk about the heroes and everything, we're actually just going to talk about this one card, Wealth Smuggler. Because this card is 
uh bugged that's gonna be my word for it it's it's uh yeah. it doesn't work properly because it's too good and um the way it interacts with some cards does not make logical sense like i'm assuming there's some coding issues there where um it will apply its buff obscene amounts of times uh like i've had like i've seen people get 90 health for one activation things like that i've seen people get yeah. Like just stupid amounts of health, and it really just makes um, the whole meta warp around it because because players aren't like, oh, this card's bugged. Let me not play with it. You know, let's just you know not do it. Right? Everyone's like, oh, this card's bugged. I'm going to dunk your out for this one card and then base my whole strategy around it. You know, because it, it, it's it's just is. too strong. It's it's not something where you're like, oh, you get an advantage. It's like, well, if you do not have poison, you will not kill my minion. Right. So for, for anyone who wonders like what this looks like, you have 300, 400, 500 health dragons. That is the norm. This is, these are not outliers. Yeah. I'm just, uh, fixing my volume real quick. Just, sure. uh, just to be careful. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's an issue. I, I was, it, it kind of like gives like half of the previous ticks and then it also works really weird with razor gore and kelly ghosts as i don't know if you've noticed other so, i think the way how it works is anything that leaves like a stack of that buff on the minion is likely to work in a bugged way where cthune is a really big one cthune mm -hmm. will do like will do his buffs and i think the more stacks of cthune the minion gets suddenly like the more like or exponentially the the whelp gets bugged and buffs it even more and more and more now i'm not sure but it seems to be that it's with cali where you have stacks yeah. on the minion of caligo's buffs it works with that it works with cthune razor gore works with itself where it has a bunch of because you might say oh it's just counting every single dragon one time but even then it's even more Right, because yeah, like yeah. people were defending the card, where it was just saying like, no, 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 it's not bugged. It's just really good. It just counts every dragon, <laughs> right? So the the card's text for anyone just listening is after you play, um, sorry, after a friendly dragon gains attack, give it two health. So people were saying, oh, the Razor Gore thing is just a Razor Gore counts one dragon, buff two dragon, buff three dragon, buff, and it would just apply on everything, which in its own would already be stupid, right? Because then you you're slapping way too much health on this card on the Razor Gore per I, turn. I, um, yeah, go ahead. I wouldn't even like necessarily absolutely hate it, but I like, would. <laughs> okay, let's say okay, if this got nerfed to like one health and then it did what it did for Razor Gore, like without without it being bugged. So let's say you have five dragons, you get five extra health. I don't hate it. But I think if you are playing dragons, Razor Gore is good enough. Yeah, right? I know. Why, That's why I know. I know. This, like, <laughs> of health? Uh, I agree. I, I I do think Razor Gore is good enough and doesn't need this particular thing. But I wouldn't hate it. Is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. So essentially, the reason why Collins wanted to talk about this card is a lot of what you do in a dragon lobby is roll for this card mm -hmm. on two. Yeah. Like you pick a dragon on one, right? There's this new dragon. We're going to cover it as well. It works very well with Smuggler. It's a 1-3 that doubles its attack every time you level. So it automatically affects its own attack, which then will interact with the uh, Whelp Smuggler. And you can then obviously... You will also prioritize Blood Gems so that you can increase the attack. You will prioritize... Maybe if you're an Edwin, you can use your hero power on the, the dragon. So it will naturally get a bunch of attack because of its ability and then a bunch of health because of Whelp Smuggler. And and like that's pretty much all you're trying to do. You're you're trying to get one or two Whelp Smugglers and then one or two dragons to work with. And then you're just looking, okay, let me get a Razigor, let me get a Caligos, or you know, any kind of hero power that interacts with it. Brand buffs, you use a uh, emissary and all these things. And honestly, at a lot of points, you're just hoping, all right, bug and do things like, ah, 20 health too much. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's what it feels like sometimes where you're just like, okay, is it going to work properly? Okay, no, nah, I only got the appropriate amount of health this time. Well, I, I, I know I, I got to play with Caligos, right? So I, I was like messing around with it. The first time you play the Caligos like Battle Cry, it will get half of what if half of the max it already had so let's say it had like 30 stacks it'll get 15 stacks the first time you play it 
but then afterwards they'll get one normally and that that seems to be the case so i'm i'm assuming that it's going to be something similar like that with like razor Gore. like the first time you get the razor Gore buff it'll get half of its max stats and then it'll get the extra like plus whatever it ticks that it has so even if you have just have one dragon that's actually enough because the razor Gore will just compound itself with the stack so uh that's only from my testing of Caligos, but I assume it works the same with Razor Girl. I don't know how it works with Cthulhu because I never got to play with Cthulhu. You know, she, poor me, right? But yeah, I assume it um, it has something to do with just giving half of the max instead of giving the one that it's supposed to. So we'll see. Yeah, that. it's just, it's just a stupid amount. Yeah, right? it, like, yeah. Regardless, to give you an idea, guys, to give you an idea, I was playing a game earlier, and my board had two whelp smugglers on it and then caligos and i rather sold a 25 damage 100 health clip yeah than a yeah <laughs> you were correct and it's so dumb it's so dumb i am tavern tier six <laughs> late late in the game and i kept a two three over a 25 100 dragon <laughs> it, it's not correct to throw it. like it's it's for your very very last fight you throw it but if you're looking for what do i cut to continue scaling you throw the big ass dragon not the smuggler because it interacts like crazy with razor gore and every other dragon with your cali will benefit a lot and yeah so dumb so absolutely dumb yeah, I mean, this card just doesn't make sense um, in its current iteration, right? Even, even, okay, so now that we've, like, I feel like a lot of players have played this card to death. It Even without the bug, it might be too strong, right? Like, I think that might be... There's definitely some, some silly numbers that can, yeah. that can happen. Um, just to play it in combination with Caligos means every Cali trigger will yeah. now give all your yeah. dragons three health. Three health, yeah. I like here's I was I was, I was thinking, oh, would I take would I play another Caligos or would I just keep the two drop? And I'm just like I would keep the two drop, right? Like I, I think a one three <laughs> so dumb. is is better <laughs> than two over. two. Right? Oh, like no, that's so dumb. I just you just made me think about that. Well, well, realistically, you'd play double Cali, double this, and you just throw whatever else. Yeah, they, they interact with yeah. Well. I know, but like I'm but, saying, like yeah, if, if you had to make, yeah. And yeah. isn't that just so? Like, <laughs> I just was like, what? What is this? <laughs> you cannot do this, and and that is not something that goes away by. Oh, let's turn it into a two three. <laughs> right? It's like no, please, God, just. Nuke it out of orbit. Just get it out of here. Make it give one health. I think that's the... Um... And fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> obviously. Well, that is the thing that bothers me, where we have seen communication from Lizard where they said, oh, we know that there is an issue with Razor Gore and we are going to patch that. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's an issue with everything. Please just fix the card. Like there's there's hero powers, there's Caligos, there's there's all these things that please don't tell me that all you're gonna do is adjust it so that it works correctly with Razor Guard. And they're like, okay, I guess we'll still play Razor Guard, but we'll just abuse it with the other stuff. Right. It's like please, like if you patch it, just you know, either either take it out until you've fixed it, which is fine. You know, we all make mistakes, no problem. But please don't leave it in and be like, all right, a Razor Guard is fixed now. You know, maybe two weeks from now, you know, we'll interact with the other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah so it's a problem um it's definitely too strong and very weird and it interacts with everything and basically the meta right now is just abuse this card abuse dragons if dragons are out maybe you can have a good game or like a, a game that has any semblance of strategy and not not abusing this card but right now pretty much every single hero every single game plan when dragons are in is fine whelps Find Razor Gore, find Caligos, and hope you're the first. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's rough out there. So, um, yes, now that we've talked about Well Smuggler, we can now address every other card <laughs> in the match because it's, it's all rely relying on this one card. Yeah, so dumb. Uh, anyways, uh, back to back to the new hero. <laughs> like we were saying. With well smuggling, you might actually play this card. Yeah, it's a hero for the Oh which my god. It's very sad. So I, I, I think that a lot of the time. Ooh, your, your voice cut out.
Oh, sorry. I think that we should also give it a review. Look. If whelp weren't in or if whelp would work correctly, I feel like this hero is just not good enough where you compare it to like Guff and Whack Toggle and you're just mm -hmm. like, ugh. So it's not even Whack Toggle or Guff at the start. I need the level to then upgrade it. And then only when I'm Tavern Tier 5, which by the way, I don't think is very good in this current meta, you know, this mini meta we have right now, uh, you get to do something that seems kind of worth it. So right now, it just, this just feels like a Whelp activator. That's it. Yeah, it's... I've played, like, I played the... Uh, I think like three times yesterday. It was like, yeah, you know, it was like, oh, is there a well smuggle? <laughs> like that's just to be fair. But even without it, it was kind of eh. I like I I um I got a couple of divine shield minions, you know, and just like hero powered it with Windows three, you know. I got two hits on my divine, you know. It was okay, but. You but know, those, those numbers don't make a difference. Yeah, right it's now. not a I hero. Huge, yeah, you have the huge dragon HP, but you also have demons that put crazy amounts of stats on the board sometimes. So I feel like that little plus one plus one just doesn't matter. Yeah, you, like it. It really, it really goes to show you how power creeped Tyrion got in in a way. Like, uh, imagine you put Tyrion back in. I don't think like anyone would really care. It like, wouldn't really matter yeah. right now. Maybe when they fix everything and they tone things down a little bit, right? You might want to look at these like smaller hero powers again. But right now, this feels purely just something to do with Welp, and that's it. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, we, we that's a good point. Like we might go over some of the uh, things we've talked about post uh, Welp yeah. changes. But right now, it doesn't really feel like too impactful of a hero. However. We shall now be talking about. Oh, that's the wrong one. Whoops. Okay, I have my topics in the wrong order. In the wrong order because I went oh, to Well Smuggler, but uh, we'll talk about Master Win. And uh, now here's a hero that is actually you know impactful, right? Very fundamental. I might like. I don't know. When I look at this hero, I was like, oh, okay, like this is the type of hero I like because it's like decision making that you get to like adjust based on yeah. what you get right but then in in practice it just feels kind of broken because you can get some really like stupid heroes and that can like really change your game plan right like reno just doesn't make sense uh when you get it like, in the right time like sometimes you might get it early and it's like well i don't want anything to target but if you get like mid game it's like ah oh, you know and then like you get ice block you get like george hero power just like oh here's my best minion just divine shield for free you know and there's like just so many like little extra buffs like and sometimes you you get like free go like you can hit omu and you're just like oh i'll just level for you know for uh reduced cost here that fixes my curve really well just like this uh, and it's not like you you're forced to get one right you get to choose out of two and usually there's like some value in 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 one of the choices that you get so it, it feels really really nice and it just feels like one of those more like dominating hero powers like if you if you spike you spike really really hard so uh, you know, theoretically, I was like, oh, this is going to be cool, interesting, maybe not the strongest, but like in practice, it's just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> this is not. <laughs> no, very, very good. Yeah. And, and I think it's also skill testing, which is nice, where yeah. it's probably a little bit too strong where you can mess up and still do very well with this hero. But to really get the most out of it and to adapt on the fly, there's some cool stuff you can do. Uh, I think one of my favorites to get in the mid game is just Millhouse. When you have this shopping, you're like, oh, I know, bye, 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 bye. It's just like very nice. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's very, very silly ones you can get where we already mentioned George, Reno. Uh, but you can also get like, oh, Alakir for a turn. Especially oh, yeah. With, especially with, with this Tarek, new card, yeah. Taragosa. Yeah. You just, Taragosa keeps all the buffs from the combat, so she'll keep Divine Shield Wind Fury Tom. Um, oh yeah, and, and I mean, just just imagine, right? If you can, if you think of the interaction, it probably works. Uh, some uh, mutinous for a round as well, really good. Where you just have this big thing. Oh, let me just eat it. Stats consolidated. Get an ice block from secret guy. Um, yeah, it's just lots and lots of cool things. Like I had this game where I opened up with Rat King for a mech. I bought a micro mummy, and the turn after, I got Pyramid. So then I like hero powered and bought another one drop. And that micro mummy already has eight health. That micro mummy is now a three and eight on turn two. And you're just like, huh, 
that ain't right. And then <laughs> <laughs> if you are Pyramid, if you are Rap King, that's that's your spike, right? That's yeah. your highlight. That's yeah. as good as it gets. But then you just dump it and you're like, all right, I'll take the Reno now. I'll take the Alec here. I'll take the George. So it feels very unfair when things line up. You get some really stupid boards really quickly. Yeah, and you can, uh, I believe you can get Shutterwalk as well. Like, I'm just going to throw that in there. I, I don't know. I haven't seen it myself, but just like theoretically, right? Like, uh, you know, that sounds like, sounds like a lot of fun. <clears throat> so I uh, definitely, I think a strong hero. I recommend this one uh, as opposed to the other, the other hero. I don't know if I would particularly rec recommend that we have to see post Wolf Smuggler buff. But this one... I think this will be played for a long time to come, uh, especially like instant staple. I think like instant gonna be played in every like in every lobby kind of power level. So that's maybe a problem, but hey, they've been doing that with uh, like a lot of like Gale Wing, right? It's like oh, didn't get touched, moved. right? Yeah, like. So, the, I, I think I like that direction more. I definitely like the direction more of give everyone some strong toys to play with than oh, Jand is too strong, nuke Jand is. Remove my app, remove hook task, right? Because a lot of these heroes are fun to play with yeah. because you have options yeah. and the options make them strong. But it's also fun to not have to just be like, I guess I'm a rag and the left guy and the right guy get a little bigger every turn. <laughs> Ooh, right? So many options. Well, you just I, don't, yeah, your game is very different if you're a Jan. I feel like so. rag could go back to 20 and it would be fine. It's just because they, they, they power creeped everything. So it's just like, yeah, yeah I don't know if. Like twenty five just feels like you're dead. Well, now, now with the fifteen, oh, we have. I, I didn't put that in the notes. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, let's immediately cover it. Damage cap. Yeah, yeah, huge. yeah. Huge, huge, huge. yeah. Both, both Absolutely, yeah. they're saving so many of my opponents. You know these days. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I thought I was gonna love him. Sometimes I just hate it. I'm just like, oh no! Now he gets to keep the Skelly at scale. Yeah. It, <laughs> It's uh, it's quite weird. Uh, I I have survived a couple of times because of it, you know. I so, saw you know maybe one or two, but it it I I think it's. I'm glad they're aware that damage is a problem. That that's really what I I like uh, out of it. Like I don't know if I like the implementation 100, percent but I'm glad they're like okay, damage is an issue. People are dying like for no reason. You know, you take 30. They also remove boat. Which you know it was kind of an issue at, at, at times too. So, um, you know we're we're probably gonna cover that more. Like I haven't covered any of the cards they removed because I, I mean four yeah, hours, right? Long. Yeah. For so, sure. um, but they are aware. Okay, that's a problem. The fifteen cap is helpful in that. I mean, really, it like encourages people to hyper level more, which is just like, ah, that's, I mean, they're yeah. doing that already. So. What, what, I, what I want to say is that it feels like such an inelegant solution, just a massive band aid. Just slap it on there. You're like, people are dying too early because of bullshit damage. All right, cap that 15. Like, <laughs> what, a, what about just doing something about the bullshit damage? You know? <laughs> Like, what is the most common thing since the last patch that happens where you're just out and it wasn't your fault? There was nothing you could do about it. Shutter walk. Shutter walk. You just yeah. meet a shutter walk that rolled two tokens or more. Nothing you could do about it. The guy has like five, six triples by the time you face him. He's on tier six. Huge dragons, huge elementals with rag or whatnot. Just was able to power level straight to six because of the tokens. And, and you take 35 and you die. Cool. Now you take 15 until the first person dies, and then you still die when you face Shutterwalk when the first person has died, because the 15 damage cap only applies when everyone's alive. So it, it feels like if you address the underlying problem, which is causing these huge damage spikes, which is, oh, heroes are allowed to be way too strong. I think right now the only like true, true issue is being caused by tokens. So we were planning on celebrating like hey you know like even though i really like them you know messing around with tokens you're going to remove tokens this is a perfect opportunity right jan does this stupid things with tokens hook dust can do stupid things with tokens shutterwalk absolutely does stupid things with tokens but instead they just slap a 15 damage cap on there and be like problem solved there you go right who cares if you fight the jan as so is like insane mama bear board <laughs> You only take 15. It's great. <laughs> right? it, just, it just doesn't feel fun that I'm losing by default. So adjusting the power level by nerfing the tokens, 
in my opinion, would just be a much, much better solution. And then, of course, we have the death rattle problem where Sneeds drops a six drop. You probably shouldn't take six damage for that. We've we've covered these these thing these two things over and over. Anyway, uh, we're not gonna beat the dead horse there. Uh, this is the way Blizzard went with it, and it should be applauded that some action is being taken. Some action is better than no action in a lot of cases here, and happy that we're experimenting with it. Who knows? Two weeks from now, I'm just like this damage cap is crazy good, but right now it feels like you can very methodically ignore your opponent's board where you say oh yeah i'm just I'm taking 17. 15 yeah yeah you're, i'm on 17 i never die here and that is very dangerous in battlegrounds when yeah. you can tell to a player you are 100 to live you're like oh yeah i'm just because sometimes you just have this move where you're like if i live i win but <laughs> oh, i really don't want to risk it all and now mm, you get the level to six you get to pick the the Kelly instead of the boat. Or, well, the boat's not in anymore, but that, that was a lot of the time where you were choosing a six drop or you were choosing a card or you were trying to set up this crazy brand right. token play. And now just giving those, uh, emboldening those plays where you say like, there is a 0% chance you die in this fight. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I've done some stupid things with Janice because I knew I wasn't going to die. I... I was playing with a golden brand and I had alley cats and I was just holding um, two rags, a coiler, uh, Caligos in my hand. And I just kept my buffed cats because I knew I couldn't die. And I was just like, I'm just going to have to sell them because I, I just kept going off to make more triples. And then when I was in a realistic danger of dying, somebody died. So the damage cap was gone. I was like, all right, now I'll just put all my cards on the board. And that was pretty stupid because, I mean, I, I won that game super easily because I was able to hold all my six drops in the hand, whereas normally you'd be forced to play a few just in case you fight someone really strong and your cats aren't enough to beat them. <laughs> so yeah. that was already an instance where I abused that damage cap really hard. Yeah, you as you were talking, you made me realize, yeah, it's, it's not a good solution because it changes how you play the game. Like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't solve the problem, but it creates other opportunities to exploit the fundamental problem of, of the damage now that you're you're like you're at 16 health and you're like oh i can just level the six here i don't care if i take 15 and i'm at one right damage is health is a resource let me just go to one and then mm -hmm. pop off right like that opportunity was not available before but because they're trying to solve this fundamental issue of damage you've created a new issue <laughs> <laughs> of now there's damage mitigation you don't have to care too much about what your opponent has on the board you don't have to worry about it like you see someone yeah. dealing you know 30 damage and you're at 16 you're like i don't care who you are i'm just gonna level and do my own play right like you end up playing against yourself instead of playing around your opponent and like it makes scouting less relevant and things like that right you don't like why look at your board if you're if even if things go wrong it doesn't matter days. yeah like it it <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's not a like it's not a good way of, of dealing things right you're trying to solve the issue but you're not trying to create oh let's give everyone free reign of, of leveling to six because they're above 15, 16 health like that's not the implementation they were thinking about right when they created this solution of a damage cap they're like oh yeah oh when people are at 20 health and they're at they're tier five they can't level to six we need to solve that right that's not <laughs> That's not their thought yeah. process, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, people are dying to relate. We need to solve that. And in that process, you're creating a whole new so whole new issue of people now just don't care about opponent's boards you're, you're in the early game. You're encouraging yeah. more of the thing that causes the problem in the first place, which is people getting access to very high star units very quickly, very early. And now yeah. you're just like, okay, well, sometimes you know, you'll be on you'll be on 30 or so, and and you're you're a tempo hero. And it feels awful because you're like, all right, I'm against the Shutterwalk. I'm going to take 15. And now I get the Janus and that's another 15 and I'm out. And, and you're just like, well, this damage cap did nothing for me because I'm this tempo hero. Uh, but these, these, uh, these more aggressive levelers now have complete safety, right? So like, does not matter, right? You want to open for it. You want to sell your whole board to still be able to get that triple. Just do it, right? You were not taking more than 15 here. But imagine being on 31. Oh, mm, 30. oh whoa, crazy. No, 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 you're on 31, you take 15, then someone else dies. And no, like, no, oh, no, the cap's gone. An another thing um, it, it changes is that 
you kind of die slower, right? Because since 15 is the cap, right? You don't get chunked from like 40 to 20, 20 to dead, right? You get chunked from 40 to 25 to 10, right? So it's a, it's a slower grind to death, right? But as soon as someone dies, then everyone dies afterwards. Like, because yeah. everyone's already OP strong at that point, right? So as soon as that first person dies, and it's like, well, everyone's dying now, right? Because you have the people that made their comp. They, they got the web smuggler, you know, early, right? So you got those guys and everyone else, right? And then, you know, you're taking like 50, you know, uh, 20, ply, 20 plus damage, you end up dying anyway. So oh, th this is this is not even that big of a deal in, in this particular meta because... True when you're playing whelp smuggler you're not even dealing that much damage a lot of the time you have these you have one razor gore damage. yeah uh yeah or, or maybe sometimes it's not even that right i had this cthune game where i was where I, where I hit actually spicy uh pretzel where or no just the regular one where you, you don't take damage um and and i just i i killed people just very very slowly with these giant tier one minions uh and and i think that once the whelp a problem gets addressed then i think that's only when we're going to see the true impact of this 15 damage cap because that's when it will be more interesting to level right now it is not even that interesting to level when i play i don't really want to go past tier four unless i want to go hard 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 on the tier six stuff where elementals are in or you know let's say i already have like the whelp stuff then yeah i can slowly get to tier six and get the cali and all that but right now, there's a lot of incentive to to be on the lower tier, and and I think that the damage cap is it's it's gonna come back and and be really annoying when people are gonna start to power level it more. Um, yeah, frequently. yeah. I didn't think about this um, potential issue, right? Like, I, I everyone's kind of been focused on wealth smuggler as they should be, right? Like right now, so yeah, it's the burning but, fire. In yeah. The room. <laughs> yeah. <put> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the damage cap actually fundamentally changes kind of how you play the game as well, right? And it's it's just it's you know it's it's just not being talked about because there there are other issues, right? But uh, it's not really solving the the like the core issue of damage, right? It's adding like a band aid fix, but the band aid fix, you know, you you there's a you know the alcohol burn is there too, so you're gonna you're getting hurt. <laughs> you know you think you you think you're healing yourself but you're still feeling that pain and maybe at some point uh the pain starts to lessen but yeah it's it's gonna be interesting especially in the coming weeks when pe things are um things are a little bit more fixed i hope they change things and then you start seeing like what is the actual meta because right now we don't really see what the actual meta is right the me like the meta is dragons but that's not going to be the meta for a, a, hopefully a long time so we don't know what the actual actual meta is, so. Um, yeah. But you get glimpses of it. Yeah, dragons, yeah, but yeah. But of what it could be. Well, dragons are still going to be in, right? And like, what if the meta is still just dragons, just less strong? Sure. You know, so we don't know if that is still going to be the dominating power. So it, it's really not, not a hundred percent if we know what the meta is or not. But we've been on this scene for too That's long. Good. It, feels like, <laughs> it feels like it's good to get that out of the way yeah. because, you know, like we, we cannot really talk about the cards if we haven't talked about these issues of tokens still being in Shadow Walk, still being in Damage Cap, et cetera, et cetera. So good to move on. Yeah. Uh, but Master Win, good hero. Anyways. <laughs> let's good hero. <laughs> now we shall talk about Demons. The this is like alphabetical order is kind of how i did but we're going to be talking about demons uh lowest to highest so first thing is impulsive trickster um i picked this sometimes you know like as a turn one and it's it's been okay um i don't think it's um i think the other tier one demon is better is what is what i'm gonna yeah. say it's a huge avenge uh, machine right? yeah, yeah yeah but but this one is like I, I don't know like I don't I don't think this card's bad or anything right and another thing is like one trickster could buff another trickster and then that other trickster gets like will buff for four right that's like kind of an interesting mechanic but like you know it's it's not a venge machine or anything like that but I I do think it's it's okay like it's a replacement for the one that buffs attack right and uh, 
I, I like the one that buffed attack more. You did because the the attack it made it made it like oh it lands on my Baron or it lands early on on my Alley Cat or something and suddenly it can value trade or it can it can actually go one for one. Whereas the HP feels a little weird right now where a lot of the time I'm like oh it's gonna buff something but it might just buff something where it really doesn't do anything. I get two sevens now and you know instead of a two three yeah you like it just still just get two shot like it doesn't matter uh, yeah. I think if you really, really invest in this minion, I've already seen some meme comps where people have parrot this thing at 40-40 or whatever, and then Baron, and you know, it just goes off in case it's like massive health boost. Sure, then it's then it's cool. And I've seen it used with a Terragosa as well. So every time it jumps to the Terragosa, the Terragosa gets to keep it. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some things you can do with this card, but I think the the normal the value of this card is it's a trigger for your Wrath Weaver, and it's something you can pick early. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of it. I think that's that's how you're using this card in most cases. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I think it's the weaker version, but it's it's it it has uses. Like there are comps that can run it, right? Just as there were comps that could run Fiendish Servant as well. Like it's there, but it's not like it's not priority, and you have to like specifically build around it or get lucky. So it's not like something you'd be like, oh yeah, Trickster, I love it. It's amazing. Let me buy it every time, right? So it doesn't have that kind of impact there uh but the uh, next one icky imp kind of kind of sometimes has that impact because we we really haven't talked about avenge but revenge is like a very impactful mechanic like uh you know like it it you know you remember when they added frenzy in like that one three five right like ah yeah frenzy blah, blah, blah. god yeah yeah, this, this like Avenge is like, oh yeah, this changes the game fundamentally. Kind of, oh, it just, this changes how I value every minion in in this sense. You know, does it have a death rattle that can summon more copies? Oh wow, maybe I'll randomly get an Avenge card and it activate a lot easier because I have uh, this random death rattle here. So, um, it kind of changes how you look at every card and they're like, oh, this is actually three minions and three minions for one minion is actually super good because now you activate my. Uh, you know, I don't know the names of every card, but I assume, yeah, my impatient doomsayer, you know, and, uh, and yeah. woo, da 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 da. Yeah, you know, so That's one you want to feel with this, but it's also just really good with juggler. So yeah, this is just it's yeah. just a safe pickup in my experience. Like this is a good pickup. You just take it, you put it on the board, and maybe it feeds um, the avenge machines. Maybe you're gonna get the soul devour, and you just play it right so. yeah it's also really good with the four mana uh six six as well right like the uh the, the buffer thing that that gets buffed when you the, use... oh yeah big fernal yeah, the, yeah. yeah big, big fernal is now a yeah, card yeah. in a lot of games uh because there's easy access to these like death rattles and it it, it feels like if, if we're on the topic of demons that especially when dragons are out because currently you know this the main strategy is to abuse whelp smuggler it's really good to just grab Wrath Reaver. Like I think I will just not skip Wrath Reaver in those lobbies because it's it just sets you up to be able to uh first of all buy these guys and be even happier about it, but then also get your impatient doomsayer. Every time it triggers, you get to play a demon. If you get the new Malganus on tier four, you don't even take damage for it. And then if you're doing that, naturally Big Fernal is gonna get a lot better because you're cycling demons the whole time anyway from the impatient doomsayer. Yeah, so actually, pretty good card. Like, I think it's, it's the better demon, and it, it activates a lot of your other demon synergies just by you know picking this up early. And it's not a card that like loses too hard. Uh, if you pick it up, like sometimes some of like the good early game cards, right? You'll you'll take damage against some of the uh, like the two threes and stuff. Huh? Because like this trades with two threes, but it's yeah, just acolyte. I think that it doesn't manage. Acolyte it does, right? Because it's a it it kills oh, right. Acolyte even it yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I think it goes toe to toe with pretty much everything then, right? There's is there a one four? I think there's a one four or something. Right, right. Arcane anomaly. Yeah. yeah. But people but, but anomaly does that a lot with like these random like it goes like anomaly then kills Scallywag, it does my curve on me. It's like right. has these good matchups for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying like it, it's a card you can take early and you're like, oh, I'm not going to take damage because I took this. Yeah. And then oh, it activates a lot of the other synergies that I might be looking for for demons. And that, that, like, I think that that makes it like really good, really powerful. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. So I think there's a really like strong demon, like <laughs> actually, uh, even though it like looks very innocent, it, it's actually like crazy. 
and how effective it can be when you you get the right setup so definitely recommend this one think it's going to be very played and things like that but yeah moving on first avenge card so we could probably talk about avenge but uh this is the new mechanic they're adding to a lot of minions trying to make um I don't know what they were thinking, but you know, a lot, a lot of different gameplay designs because of Avenge. Uh, the fact that, uh, so Avenge, to clarify, it has Avenge in a number. Uh, these, this mini minions has to die on your board for it to activate. So if it, if it has two, then two minions have to die, then it activates. And what's really interesting is that Avenge can trigger multiple times per turn. I'm not like sold on that uh, currently. Like, I'm not sure that's like, super fair to be to be honest like the fact that you can get like five demons in a turn like i don't know it's like five gold like i uh, you know like i don't know if that's balanced well, five is a little hard to set up of course okay right? let's say three, three okay whatever put die. put three in okay three minions a turn yeah, right so like the high roll of this card is stupid right i have seen people run this with an imp mama and you know then the imp mama pulls a void lord and i was like hey we are off to the races that's how you get those five and, 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 and you can well you can easily have two of them right like or you can easily have a golden one right like then then there you go like well, it, i would say easily probably not right well a lot of people are after this but yeah if you do end up goldening it it's it is silly it's not like that's not like the craziest thing in the world. I golden my three tavern three minion. I wow! Getting, I getting a golden whelp smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that happens, of course, especially as people start dying. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm saying that this card is already fairly competitive right now. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, for sure, the the potential is there. I I think this the the most important thing with this card is timing. Where mm -hmm, I think yeah. it can be a huge debate. Wait, yeah, uh -huh. that's me. Like that's the first make, time I've played it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you have to make room in your comp for this thing, it's probably a little too late. Like the 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 time. Like what I like to compare this to is just like a really really good coin lady or whatever. Yeah. Right. The three three. It's just like. Hmm, but I really really go out of my way to make coin lady and a parrot work at this stage of the game probably not anymore right i think them at the stage i need to be strong but it, it's is this card where if it fits your composition really well you have board space already you just put it in the back you have acolyte the taunt and that's two bodies you have the imp in the front that's gonna feed it it's amazing because it just especially if you have a wrath weaver on the board it's gonna make you strong it's going to make you rich. You're going to be able to level. And it's just stupid, silly, silly, silly things. It can give you triples, right? Silly, silly things can happen. Like one game, I actually got three soul devours off this, like in my hand. So it's just like right, a right, soul uh, devour. It's just, I think that's the one that goes under the radar when people yeah. do the math on how much money you make off this thing. Every time you get a soul devour, that's three coins. It's just like, oh my God. So the high roll potential is crazy on this card. Yeah, you know what? The more I think about it, the like it's already stupid, right? But like just talking about it, I re like because I've really only played one day, so that's that's not enough to play everything. Uh, like in in a in a and then see it right in action yeah, yeah. and be like, mm, do I like this? Yeah, yeah but it, it's actually just dumb, very dumb, especially early, and you can get it on tier three, and uh, I don't know, like. If you have the right sub, this card is just absolutely, uh, really, really strong. Definitely one of the best event uh, cards. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's that's going like, to be really easy. If to anything, say. they will uh, they will Nerf remove revenge. Health. They will remove health on this card. Oh. I feel like, that's <laughs> like who cares? That's the Blizzard. <laughs> well, you know, uh, if it's, if it's, right now at six health, it survives getting sniped sometimes, right? Like a five five hits this thing, it doesn't die. Come on. It's a three drop. Why yeah. does it survive the five five? <laughs> yeah, it, it might it might lose health. Um you know, they can also change the avenge numbers. I, I, I they can I mean Avenge proccing multiple times, like you know what like i i don't mind like two procs you know but when you're saying that hitting like four or five it's like eh, kind of weird yeah, but yeah the, the the upper ends right the, the ceiling on the high roll there is no ceiling it's just yeah. like just keep going to the moon immediately yeah you yeah. can you can have one really really good fight and win the game 
yeah you know assuming that you know dragons are out and no one else is like there's no shutter walk doing something absolutely stupid i i had one of those fights where i fought someone else and they just kept getting value through death rattles and letting mama and stuff and it's just like they, they just gained six demons in their hand if not more okay what am i supposed to do right three of them are sold about i mean two of them are sold devoriously yeah Yeah, and if you have a golden wrath weaver on the board at the same time which a lot of these people have because you're focusing hard on demons every demons plus four plus four that's crazy that's so many stats for free but yeah uh definitely a strong card so um pick it up play with it yeah uh I don't know. Like, oh man, I, I, there's more to talk about, but it's because Welps or Welp Smuggler is in. It's like, ah, is this like, does this need to change? I don't know yet because it dies to Welp Smuggler just the same, right? Like, it's like, whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely, a, definitely a strong card and definitely something you're going to be play, playing with afterwards. So, so yeah. Moving on, uh, we have Kathranatur. How do you pronounce this name? Malganis on four. Malganis on four. Okay, I like that name too. <laughs> your demons have three uh, attack, your hero's immune. Catherine uh, a tier. I got a Catherine a tier because I guess that's already a posture. I don't know. It's a card that is Malganis, but uh, one tavern tier less. And yeah, and um, three attack instead of two, two. Yeah, three it's attack Malganis. instead of two, two. In every other form. Malganus has the same stats, right? Or was Malganus like a 9-7? Uh, nine, 9-7, seven. Seven, nine, seven, nine, nine, seven, right? 9-7? Okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah it is. But I mean... The yeah, same you thing. Played, yeah. You played Malganus sometimes early what? because it was what? a, a shtick, right? You just like put it on the board. What yeah. happened is Malganus had the plus 2, plus 2 on itself, you see. That's what happened, mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they realized that that's broken, but then in order to compensate for it, they moved down a tavern tier. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, I, mean, I, I like this. I, I think I like this change. Yeah, I, I do. Think a lot I of do. The time for for demons, you were just hungry for that Morganus. Demons were usually played on four if you were doing the big demon thing with the big fernals and wrath weavers. So just being able to roll into this uh, new and improved Morganus, I, I like that a lot. Also, the three attack makes a lot of sense if you're playing stuff like the little imp and you're playing all these tokens because usually you don't really care if your tokens get more health they rarely value traits so three attack is sometimes better than plus two plus two well you see i i would summon five seven uh void lordings and that sometimes trader once or twice so pff, i don't know about you <laughs> if you're at the point where your void walkers are value trading you're probably winning that fight i was <laughs> That's a good point. So yeah, I, I, I do like the change. I, I think it's better on four anyway. So I, I think this is good card design in terms of like you see an issue with demons, you know, I think demons were widely regarded as one of the weakest classes. Um, at least like you had like the juggler, you know, mid game spike and then everything else is like, eh, you know, maybe a mama could cheese you early, but that's it. It'd be very rare. You'd have to look at the lobby be like, okay, there's no Murlocs. And I'm Zephyrus, and I've got a gold grubber and a golden weaver. And it's like, there was these really rare games where you just like muscle through with stats. And then chat would be like, oh my God, demons. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd be like, demons are good, you know, Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're right. It it wasn't the best, but this this helps demons a lot as well as with the other changes. So I I, I like this. I and I think this is like the right direction, uh, to kind of help a class that was you know statistically not in a in the best spot. So yeah, good good change. Yep. Uh, next card we have Insatiable Urzer. So this one is very interesting. I I and really sh- kind of, um gives you a, a window into like their design philosophy for demons right they wanted they wanted to make uh some classes distinct right and i think this is like their uh, um you know their example for demons this is how we're going to make it distinct from other classes we're going to give them an ability that only this particular minion type has and uh, we'll see and it's going to be impactful it's going to be useful it's going to be interesting Theoretically, at least. Uh, uh, so it has after you play a demon, consume a minion, and Bob's having to gain his stats. So you're stealing minions in the tavern and taking their stats. So I think it's pretty interesting uh, card. If you have it with um, 
What's the name of that one card that does that one thing? Uh, <laughs> impatient, right? Yeah, impatient doomsayer. Yeah. yeah, just printing demons. Yeah. yeah exactly. that, then, then you you can get a lot of value here where you just eat the whole board essentially, and um, it, it kind of reminds me of Mythrax, right? They removed Mythrax, but they have this instead. And if you if you can get a couple of eats, it kind of has a similar style line. It has a taunt, which I think is okay. I don't like. There's not as many people going like poison scam so having like a big ton isn't as like absolutely horrible uh or or has that like big weakness as as it used to so you can definitely have this be like a a, a big force for you while you're scaling off the the demons you're generating from the uh impatient doomsayer so I, I think this card's playable you have to get it early like i think demons right now have an issue with like there's too many things to put on your board right now like <laughs> i want to put this in and this in and this in right so sometimes you have to be selective oh you know because you have this and you're like maybe i just want like the uh, like a void lord right because that's like maybe two or three hits for my doomslayer you know that you know like oh yeah and you're just like is that really or you know the line or you have a juggler comp you're like oh is this really good for jugglers because maybe i just want like my golden juggler to proc two more times instead <laughs> so you're just like huh you know like theoretically this is like really good right but sometimes you come to the the um uh, issue where you just have too many options and too many things to go and you're like you're like, do I want the value or do I want the stats? Do I want to go for this? Do I want to commit? Da, da, da. So, I mean, I think it's playable and it, it definitely has its uses, right? But there's so many things that you can do uh, with demons and you have just that limited board slot that it sometimes can feel a little bit awkward. That's my imp initial impressions. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that is the same thing that happened with Cool Wars. When, when Cool Wars came out for me, uh, it was impossible. I always needed more board space. And then as time progressed and you get more comfortable, you know very well, okay, this I can keep, this this I can't keep. So this will be one of those things where we'll have to play with it and then we'll figure out, okay, this is the this is the time where I want to put this on the board. Uh, and this is the time for the Doomsayer to leave, et cetera, and all, all those things. Um, right now, for me, I haven't had a moment where I didn't want to add this when I was playing Demons. Uh, I think for I me, mean, a lot of the time, yeah. I will. I will, I mean, I, I pretty much drop it in, but I think about it. I think about, oh, do I want to sure. keep? You know, I play yeah. it, right? but I think okay. about it. Well, well, you mentioned the juggler, so I think if if you're doing this, I feel like you're moving out of the out juggling of juggler, into yeah. the big demon territory. Okay. Where if you're committed to juggling, this isn't even that good because jugglers aren't spamming demons the whole time, right? Um, but if you're playing Malganus. Big Fernal, Wrathweaver, hmm, this fits right in. Just you were you were gonna play demons anyway, so yeah, for sure. Uh, it's it's like a big demon card, and it does a lot of work in there. Um, there there has been a cool thing that um, I got from Saf, where there's this new elemental that buffs the tavern, and he played two of those guys to buff his tavern, and then he had this Urzul, which then oh. ate. 2020 elementals <laughs> which got a lot better a lot faster uh, so there is some really cool things you can set up I, I did that too and it it feels cute where you're like hmm I can I have these big ass elements maybe in the tavern know me style right yeah. yeah maybe you play this with elementals you actually don't play it with demons everything you know like you you play yeah, elementals the, and you just run this the problem the problem with that is you can't aim it so you technically would have to either oh. have enough demons in your hand that you can't miss or uh, you'd have to buy the other things in the shop so it, it's all theoretical and it's possible but in practice it's probably a lot harder you, to make that work you run the the four men and know me you run one copy of this and you run an impatient doomsayer and then you have four other free slots for whatever, like more elementals. Yeah, or something. I've done that. I've, yeah. Like, I think if you have the four or five early, it's definitely something you can do. But then at some point, it's going to be extremely hard to justify having that four or five on the board. So then by that time, and we say the four or five is the elemental that buffs elemental. No, you're attack. you're playing the elemental. You know, you're playing out elemental comp. You just have this and a doomsayer as like your filler. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because you'll get two what's demons. Winning the, what's winning the rounds then? I feel like if you're running a Doomsayer, you kind of want to be running a Wrathweaver anyway. 
What's winning the rounds are your 4040 elementals, you know, and your huge, oh, like, two. That's how Nomi works, right? Yeah, yeah. Elementals <laughs> winning the game for you. And it's that easy. Yeah, it's just like, I get Nomi, Nomi brings the whole game. Like it's yeah. just that easy, you know? I, I mean, you know, you, you've... You do five it, drops as the, well, right? Just like, put it on my, your My three-step process, you have, you have uh, the four or five elemental... You have this, and then step two is question marks, and then step three, you win with <laughs> with forty for the elementals and the gigantic Ursa. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> okay, all right, let's let's move on. But, yeah. you know, throwing out a little fun thing if you want to try it in your own games. Buff the tavern with Nomi or the four or five, and then eat it with this big guy. Sounds fun. Uh, next card we have damaged. Felt So this card is pretty cool, especially if you get it early. If 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 dragons are not in and you get this early, this card is really cool because uh you just eat the whole board and it's just like a nice animation and, and your board gets stronger and you're like, ah oh, yeah, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> well I have to roll and get a good shop to eat, but yeah. it felt a bit underwhelming for me, but I think I just need more experience with it and more exposure to it. I guess right now in this meta, a lot of that's not dragons feels underwhelming. Yeah, so it's I don't know maybe maybe it just felt I think it's because you can't use two of them because there's not yeah that's what I would that's that's the one thing I, I think uh, yeah. like feels normally, off yeah if you're playing rag you add a second drag you're ecstatic you yeah. add a second Kelly you're yeah. ecstatic you add a second fell bath you just put it in your hand and you're like oh, I guess I'll hold it for when I triple it and like not being you know a second Eliza insane right so not being able to play a second copy of a six drop feels off now I, i'm not saying that they have to change that or that this should interact somehow but i feel like that's a big downside right now where you can double up your your scaling speed hmm. yeah i mean you could change it to like pick a pick a random minion in the shop and take its stats right so it doesn't consume it but yeah right yeah, no, I'm not saying they have to change it yeah, at all. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out. Like, this has been the obvious weakness that I spotted when I wanted to play this comp. Is I actually got a second Felbat and it, it didn't matter. Yeah. yeah still put it on the board because it's a demon and it'll eat, but it's not going to increase your scaling. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, like, this is a, like a standalone card if you get it early. But, you know, you could play it and it's like a 10 10. You know, it, it's like a Mythrax. <laughs> You know, if you're playing it by itself, maybe not the craziest thing, but yeah. I mean, I I think there's potential for the card, um, especially with demons. Like, if you if you have good demons already, this just kind of supplements it, and you just get one, and it's all right, and uh, kind of okay. It, it, and if you're on six, it's with uh, Doomsayer. I don't know how likely that is, but you can get tier six demons, right? So Imam and stuff like that. So it. Theoretically, it's not the hardest thing to triple, right? Like, you know, compared to some of the other minions. But it is... I, I think it's playable. I think it's good. Uh, if you get it early, at least. Like, I, you have to get it early. That's that's the one thing. Like, if you... The later on, like, people just have a better options, right? But if you get it, like, you know, super early in the game, you, uh, you can pick up... And you, you're running, like, Demon Comp. It just supplements it, right? It's an easy way to supplement your comp. Uh, but it doesn't like it's it's not like it, it doesn't feel like like the golden light fang or something where sometimes you have golden light fang and you're just like yeah, i don't know if i have to do anything at that point right but you do still have to keep playing the game and keep uh making sure things work out and 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 the scaling is rng right like you're not always going to eat the best things in the shop right so yeah. or or have the best minions eat the best thing but it is something there it, it works really well with um battle masters i saw that uh where if if you're eating like a five five for your battle master you know that, yeah that is really cool yeah. if you have a battle master from uh, i i think this one takes that whole elemental spiel to the next level right this is now there is an obvious really good payoff because you can now roll and if you have three 2020s in the tavern you're just like all right pause i'm even gonna burn a gold just not gonna do anything and just sit here and let them eat those uh those big boys so i think that 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 is something to be explored i think with the felbat yeah i saw someone um suggest like you get a felbat comp and you just go like 
selfless, you know, a selfless baron, right? Like just big, big demons, right? Just like an easier way to act to create a big demon cult. I, I think that could work theoretically, right? Especially when dragons are not in, but uh, there's potential there. I don't know how crazy it will end up being, right? It's not, it's, I don't know what the future holds for the meta in terms of this card, right? It could end up being, like, oh, this is really good. It scales really fast and that you can just play it. Or it just could be like one of those, oh, it's too slow. You need two of these, but then two of these don't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> right now I'm on the fence. Uh, for me, I'm in the camp of, of too slow and doesn't do enough. Okay. We'll see. But I, I do think it's an interesting card design. And, and, and demons are in a good spot, I think, right now. So it's not... It's it's not an issue that like their tier, their tier six isn't like the game changing. Oh, your minions have divine shield. Um, ooh, if you could consume divine shield minions and get the divine shield buff, that would be cool. But uh, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe that's too like crazy. But <laughs> that would be actually kind of <laughs> maybe broken. But yeah, um, moving on. I believe we're going into dragons. So. Here comes the complaints. Uh, but yeah, I think the first one involving Chroma Wing. So I, I think this is an interesting design card, actually, right? Like double your minions attack. It's a card you can play uh, through the game, right? Like uh, it just scales through the game, and especially with like how Web Smuggler works right now. You just kind of, you don't need to find different dragons essentially, right? So you, you start with a Chroma Wing and then you find a whelp and then you're like, okay. I will get my stats here. Very happy to pick this up as your first minion. Yeah. Like, deal. Done, Bobby. Right. I'll grab it. Yeah. So, uh, definitely a strong card. And um, I don't think it's like a problem card right now. Um, it's just because of Welp, it, it feels like, oh, this everyone's playing it, right? But like, I don't think it's an issue. Like, having like an, like a, what, like a 33, a 30 attack, three health minions, like, yeah, it's good, but yeah, I'm not. We'll have, we'll have to see. Uh, it still feels very good with Welp, even if Welp weren't bugged, because you're just um, that's such an easy because because you usually miss attack on your dragons when you're playing. Welp, yeah, you're yeah. Because like, ah, there's such a huge difference between the Chroma Wing and an actual Red Welp. Because sometimes you'll you know I was playing Cthulhu and I was just like oh you know I'm just staying on two and I'm like sure I'll buy these two Red Welps. And even with a Caligos later on, like these, these, these whelps were just like, eh. like <laughs> yeah, they have like 90 health or something. Like, they don't deal with damage. So, I like it, a waste of gold. It, to be honest, it, it's so yeah. weird having like 12 a hundreds. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty it's, much. It's, so the, it's the weirdest thing. Uh, where you're just like, okay, okay, a hundred out there, and then you're just like, oh. It it takes five attacks to kill something like you like just these like battle masters. But I <laughs> don't do much. <laughs> but yeah, uh, definitely, I th I think it's a good card. Um, I I'm imagining they're gonna nerf well. That's 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 why I'm like, oh, it might be okay, right? I I I'm imagining that it's gonna be like maybe one health or something like that. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see what happens, but yeah. This, yeah. This this card in the very current iteration of this meta is really really good, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so now we're where we're supposed to be with the Wild Smuggler, uh, though we did talk about it at the beginning, yeah, but yeah, covered this batshit crazy. Please nuke. Yeah, well, you know maybe not nuke it, but like you know nerf it gently. Remove it. Remove all evidence. Would removing it be the line though? You think would would that actually be fine if you just like get rid of it? I don't know if I want to deal with this shit to be honest. <laughs> okay. Like okay, so the the fact that it's on tier two, two maybe an issue. It gives you flashbacks of Amalga Dawn or what, what was it called, Amalga yeah. on tier two. Yeah, people Amalga, were just yeah. like rolling on two to get to that. Get, yeah. And then you had your most important card for the rest of the game secured. Mm -hmm. It feels like we. I don't want that. I don't want to be able to roll on two to get my game plan ready and then play that and it feels like right like which other two drop enables this sort of scaling right Spawn. Like, like, yeah, Burn. Insane, oh, yeah. Right? Like, it, it feels like this kind of card has no place on tier two you right? remember the um the cannon 
the cannon, right? Yeah. The, the way you just go like Scallywag cannon, just, 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 just shoot everything. That's <laughs> that kind of thing. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we yeah, dude. That pi- also not very healthy. Pi- right? Pirate yeah. comp wasn't even invented back then. Imagine with a cannon in there, you're just like high. <laughs> <good. laughs> you know, it's kind of board space though. Yeah, yeah it would be funny. But that that would be my my uh, guess. But it got removed, so you know maybe you're onto something there. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's that's just my my initial take on it, mm. right? It feels like I I I don't like that you can you know like this this is like Arm of the Empire, but even like crazier, right? Yeah. Where Arm provides you at, at least for arm you need to tear up and find more stuff this is like oh i have my tier one dragon and i have my tier two dragon buffer yeah i'm set right now at least with arm it's still okay i still need to go to four i still need to hit an argus or i still need to hit module i need to get those deflectos but i really dislike that you can roll a good one drop and then roll whelp smuggler on two and you're like okay that is the most difficult part of the game behind me now all i need to do is just write the buffs and I just really, really don't like that. I really don't want to have this kind of direction on Tavern Tier 2. I want people to have to play and make the most out of it and then get direction from higher tier cards. I don't want to get huge direction from low tier cards like this. Fair enough. So I don't know, right? Like, um, it's too bugged for me to give an odd, like, a a reasonable sure. analysis of the card right so right now it's bugged and everything everything goes around it i think two health is too much i don't even know if one health would be okay right but that's that would be my current that's how i would change it immediately right like you know today i would change it like <laughs> i've seen i've seen one day of it okay i would already change it but um we'll have to see in the future after it gets adjusted uh if if it's still feels overpowering and too demanding or game deciding blah 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 but right now this is definitely the card that's on everyone's mind definitely the problem child so um you know we talked about it already but yeah we will continue to talk about it but yeah definitely uh i recommend this card if we're you know but no (laughs) (laughs) i don't uh, right now but yeah it is it is a card horrible to lose to it where you're just being beaten to death by some like glyph guardian that just won't die That's so true. Uh, uh, but yeah, moving on, we've got Terek Gosa. I actually think this might be the most interesting card they added in. Um, that, that might be my current opinion of, of the cards. This card is really cool and how... how well, it, it's weird because of... Well, like all the dragons are weird because of well smuggler, but let, like without well smuggler, like this card is pretty cool in that you can you can do some really interesting things that you couldn't you can't really you can build game plans around having this card where you there are some other game plans that just won't work without this one card, right? You can give it divine shield, you can give it stats like spawn gives it plus one plus one per turn. A lot of people just run spawn. You know, selfless works really well there, and you can just get like. Uh, it works really well with that with the uh, the tier four dragon as well, just getting stats and stuff like that, right? It, it currently feels slow because if this card's in, then well smuggler's in, right? So you're like, ah, you know, I just go well smuggler with this, right? But um, if you know, it, without well smuggler, right? There's some interesting scaling potential that you can do with this, right? Especially like, you know, there's there's so many cards that buff in battle, and just getting to keep that, it's just like. Oh. <laughs> kind of cool so uh, i find this card pretty interesting just due to whelps it's uh whelps it's it's weird but i think it's a really playable card man. yeah this this one's on my radar to be honest oh there. okay I, I looked at it and i was like yeah okay you know like probably good ish but then then you just see some interactions that you're just like oh yeah i'm just like hunting for that card because You'll just make it work. I think that's the main thing. When when you see this card in the shop as a 4-4, four, four, you probably... It's a Hank. Play. Yeah, right? And usually... You and Hanks Hank, are amazing, like, right? How do you not... Hank, yeah. How do you not see this and be like, this is amazing, it's a Hank. Like, <laughs> I just don't get it, Shady. He gets to keep his buff just yeah. like him. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, like you mentioned, right? There, there's just things like, oh, spawn. And then, of course, when you have smugglers on your board, it goes into overkill mode because then <laughs> combat buff still work with the well smuggler. So let's say you have a spawn, which will then give your Taragosa one extra attack. Your whelp smugglers will then give it an additional 4 HP. And it goes up very, very, very quickly. So especially in the current meta, snap this card, right? This card is just yeah, very, very abusable with the smuggler interaction. Yeah, I know. Smugglers interaction, wow. Dragons are good. Yeah, I know. This, but regardless of smugglers, I think this card is cool and that's important. But yeah, with smugglers, I mean, you just kind of abuse the smuggler gameplay. I mean, we're going to say that by every dragon, but <laughs> this one is no exception. But I think even without uh, well, smugglers, this has a place in the game. That's all I'm saying. Uh, though. I could see this becoming too good um, if they introduce like different mechanics and they're like not thinking about this card. Like this is one of those cards where you can forget it's in the game and 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 how it interacts with every card and just be like, oh yeah, there's this card that can just give give something like a hundred health or something. And you're just like, oh that's oh yeah, I forget about Talagosa with with that. You know, even with even that demon that gives health, right? Like. Oh yeah, you could you can just like oh yeah, I forgot about that synergy and then just have like two hundred health Taragosas like out of nowhere and you're just like, huh. Seems good. <laughs> but yeah, I I think this card's playable, especially in the current meta. Uh moving on, we've got prize pro promo Drake. Um Initially I wasn't a fan of this card. Uh like I guess I, I like like you said under the radar. That's kind of my impression of this card, right? yeah. but um, like it really works well with Terragosa, right? It's just a permanent buff, and even and like Bronze Warden is still in, right? Like early game, you just you you have a Bronze Warden with this, tempo. yeah. It, it's it's a lot of power, so it just gives you stats, and you know I I mean I I think it's reasonable. It's an okay card. What what's your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's it's one of those cards where once again interacts extremely favorable favorable with smuggler um, and Daragosa because it'll not only just give plus one plus one, it'll then for every plus one plus one give another plus two or another plus four health, uh, depending on how many smugglers you have. And then I don't know if it'll just bug out as well on top of that and give even more HP, but. It it allows to scale your Terragosa very very quickly, and it's it's just okay to have on the board. And it's one of those cards that you just comfortable switching out later. Mm -hmm. When you're playing dragons, you always need a slots right. If you're gonna introduce an Adina, you're gonna introduce a Caligos. You still want to have a battle cry slot. You might even play an Amalgadon. So this is a perfect card to just play early, get a ton of value up, and then when it's time to go into the real big big scaling, just throw it out. Yeah. So. Um... It has its place. It, it's a uh, works really well with Terror Ghost, I guess. So that's like the the love child, or you know, the things that you know they they work really well together. But generally, even without it, it's an okay card. Um, just to give you some tempo, because sometimes you don't have enough tempo while you're looking for like the pieces for your dragon comp, and this might be like what you need to like, you know, get to get to 16 health so you don't care about getting one shot or, or something but yeah um yeah moving on i think that's the last dragon right there were they didn't add any um oh no 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 no, no. we got pre pre prestors i forgot about this guy uh, this guy is okay uh i think it's really good for like popping divine shields uh that's kind of um holy mackerel not a problem no, holy macro is still a problem. I'm not giving that. A, no, I'm not, <laughs> like, like one of one of the things that could challenge dragons. Oh, just you know, give them a tech card. You know, make sure make sure those pesky divine shield minions don't stand a chance. It really feels like it's it's like ghoul, but only for their side. Right? So uh, it's it's nasty. Yeah, this card might be too strong. What do you think? Like, uh, like in terms of like it removes an option. Like you're trying to play around dragons, and they have this. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you can run this kind of core 
because we talked about how board space is such an issue because you want to keep, you know, if you do not have a golden smuggler, you will probably have two smugglers on your board and you will want to keep the two smugglers. So let's say in a world where smuggler either gets removed or. Yeah, but no, but what happens like it's last fight. You triple your smuggler, you play this, that's it, like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I'm that's what I was trying to get at. It's it's okay as a tech option, right? But if it's by default in the comp, if you can do that, then it's even more frustrating to play against because then, you know, what if you know you're playing George and you know the other person will have a ghoul by default that's really just demotivating and <laughs> it, it just it just makes it so that whenever let's say dragons are going to be the norm and they're going to be like the most powerful tribe you really don't want to have something in that toolkit that invalidates a whole way of playing which is oh i'm going to be playing um divine shields yeah yeah, all in that role and at least when you have to counter with the ghoul first of all you need to roll into it and then you need to sacrifice a board slot but if you can make this a core unit it just scales with your Kelly. It just scales with your smuggler or whatever you're doing. And then by default, the vine shields are not an option for the other side. And that is what I'm afraid of. Whereas if you have to roll into it, you could basically have a ghoul and it does a similar thing, right? Like remove all shields. Um, but you play six units. That's the price you pay. See, but, but the, another issue I have is like, you're saying, oh, it's like a ghoul. But it's a, it's a ghoul. And then you're playing like Master Win. You have George Hero Power. You know, your Razor Gores or Divine sure. Shield. Like, it's sure. like, it's I'm, way better. <laughs> it's disgusting. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking late game, right? So in late game, if you have Ghoul Nadina, that's usually what would happen where you remove their shields and then you would get shields. Sure. So in that regard, it is pretty much a Ghoul. But okay. it's true that throughout the game, you can play this, and you can play this for tempo, right? Because sometimes you just have comps that are reliant on some Divine Shield early. Right, you have someone that has a module and the arm like this. This eats arm for breakfast, right? It's like, oh, that's cute. That like forty attack, two health, acolyte, pew, deal three to it. My dragon's not going in there. You know, like the second body of the acolyte, pew. I'm not wasting my divine shield on that. It's just like it's so disheartening. Some comms just get dismantled by just this one card. So, um, yeah, I, I don't really like that direction. It feels like they were like, all right, flavor for this expansion dragons right my beautiful dragon babies make sure no little pesky counter can be formed here you know we have the dina and then we can remove their shields with this uh press yeah why do dragons get all the good stuff i just like what what's going on you know reno behind the scenes you know i i'm i'm sure they're leading something there right because reno's a dragon technically right like apparently you know yeah i think that Everything dragons had was completely acceptable because of the risk it took with it to go to six to go find this right. But uh, especially if dragons are going to get a lot of early game support, that formula suddenly doesn't make sense anymore. You can't both give them the huge high end payout of being able to divine shield your whole board. Like other comps don't really do this, right? Other comps don't be like, oh, one card shield your whole thing, no problem. And then Caligos is great scaling. You that 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 equation made sense because you would give up a lot of health and you would risk stuff or you would need to be incredibly strong to just go to six and then put Callies on your board whereas now if we're going to say oh no worries you're going to get smugglers early and they're going to handle your early game then you're going to hit this five five and the Terragosa in the mid game you're going to be super strong no problem we're going to add a pyro spawn you're still strong keep leveling oh you're six or oh, add the caligos add the nadina and it suddenly becomes too streamlined of an experience where you like roll into dragon and you're just never weak like that's not okay like you have to have a weakness and like for for mex it's like okay we, we get strong early but then there's no like insane upside in the late game you're you're on the cheesy end right now you're the guy that well, well with holy mackerel player. now I, I think you have some late game potential there. Yeah, I mean, uh, this guy doesn't care, but yeah, sure. Well, I mean, how many I, I was talking about before the before patch. Before the patch, yeah. With holy, with holy mackerel, absolutely, mechs have powerful late game. You also have this Omega Buster, which we're going to cover, which also provides some late game. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't like the direction it's headed right now. Okay. Dragons, 
it seems way too streamlined of an experience where you do not really have a weakness. You don't have this moment. You don't have this lull where you're just like, oh, like on five, it's Razor Gore. You're just like, oh, wow, cool. Another good thing I can have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit weird. Um, uh, I mean, they wanted to change some cards, right? But I, I do. I'm probably going to talk about it after. I'm going to have like initial thoughts discussion, right? But, that, but who cares? Let's do- <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so weird right because they added uh 37 cards right but still a lot of the important cards of the cards are that didn't change this did get removed right you still run uh you know eliza's still good pirate comp hasn't changed at all you know to- tokens are still good in right that hasn't changed at all sarawak's still in da, 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 right there's just like other broken stuff but it's broken stuff to supplement the comp the comps we're already running you know oh mech mecha mecha holy macros in there or whatever okay well now we can just supplement this uh, oh they added grease bot grease bots like really good now you know what they they removed they removed my sensei for a stupid grease bot but grease bot's way better so i can't even be mad <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know it's just like ah uh, you know i'm running my comp but now i've got a grease bar instead of a sensei it's oh, so <laughs> so much better <laughs> you know so it, it, it feels a little weird because i i get the feeling we're still going to be doing what we did before but now there's like more choices which is good right but you're still you're still seeing the same comps i'm still seeing you're still seeing kelly goes scaling you're still seeing you know it's a different version of Nomi, but it's Nomi, uh, essentially. Uh, you're still seeing uh, the dra- dra- demons are different. I will say the demon experience is very different. And maybe the pirate experience is also a little bit different, I think. I've seen some, like, um, the the pirate that buffs if you get a card in your hand. Like, that, that yeah. card just changes how you play pirates, I think. You can do some cool hogger things. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Uh, yeah absolutely uh, and and on top of everything we need to say you know this is day two right, right. Or day three depending on where you live it's just like give it time right because well, there it, are I, I think a good example might be Jandis, where Jandis came out nobody knew how to play her and then i don't know how long it took but then suddenly it's like oh right this is what you're supposed to do with it and then the whole definition of Jandis uh, changing you're just like oh wow I gotta I'm say, new. everyone knew how to play a turn one. It's Pogo Strats, baby. You know, that was the uh, game for it. Sure, Pogo, right? <laughs> but then, then, you, then you look at the token stuff, how how cool, how much cooler that is. Well, that's straightforward. But, but yeah, whatever. Just just pointing out that there's there's stuff that we're going to miss. There's stuff that everyone's going to miss. And, and the collective is going to figure it out. Someone's going to do something cool and be like, oh, cool. And the opponent's going to notice that. And that That's how suddenly when when arm was released you had this like slow ish movement but then suddenly it was this overwhelming wave of taunted divine shields with two arms in the back and, like, and then you couldn't get around it anymore and yeah. something like that is going to happen here as well when wealth gets nerfed and we get to actually play the meta shady rolling the pebble down the hill you know yeah, well, i'm gonna play i'm gonna play on come every game <laughs> little, little, little pebble <laughs> give it a week everyone's doing it <laughs> oh man yeah but yeah i i definitely think it's interesting this hero in particular i mean this minion in particular it does open up like compositions where there isn't really a counter in, in that like oh yeah i just have this set up while i have divine shield dragons with nadina you can't deal with it you know that it seems a little busted but I don't know. Like the card isn't like fundamentally bad, but the way it's it's utilized, it's really it's really oppressive, especially with everything dragons have as well. So, kind of feels a little bit weird uh, to see it. But yeah, moving on to the next minion select minion selections, we have elementals, I believe. So we shall start with the new one, Smogger. So they removed buff everything by all your elementals by one and they've changed it to buffer friendly elemental equal to your tavern tier so i do think this is a better version uh just because with elementals you would have elementals and stuff like that that you didn't really care about buffing you're like oh, i don't care but i mean i'll play it because i want to buff my other things now you're like ha ah, my divine chill elemental okay i'm just gonna stack this oh amalgadon early okay i know what i'm targeting this on da, da, da. so it just gives you um a more 
a concentrated surge of power and that's really what you want i think with a lot of the elementals uh that you're running you want to you have like really good elementals that you want to buff and then you have like elementals and stuff that you don't really care about uh getting extra stats uh, at least past a certain point so i i think this is a better version of the of the one that they got replaced with which is uh i i like it too because a lot of the time when you're playing anything with elementals you're just going to be okay what's my next uh, what's my next and with this thing you're not buffing collateral you're just like, i'm not getting uh, or, well, without, uh, you're, no you're kind of cutting out uh half the oh, sorry. yeah okay <clears throat> so when you're playing elementals a lot of the time you need to make cuts where you say oh you know i found another rag and i'll need to get rid of something oh i found uh, maybe another master of realities or whatnot. I need to kick. I need to kick something. And with this card, you get to focus the stats, like you said. So you don't end up selling a lot of the collateral that the old arcane anomaly would do. Um, I had a, I had a game earlier today where I had a golden brand and I had this thing on tier six. And I was, whew, that's eighteen eighteen every time you you play it. And then another uh, three three per rag. So pretty, pretty insane can get, can get to like stupid proportions. So yeah, I, I like this and I don't think it's oppressive. I think there's just yeah. moments where you're just going to be like, Ooh, that's a, that's a big chunk of buffing. Yeah. I, I think it, um, it's a good addition, right? Like it has some stupid moments where you're like, this is, you know, this is really strong, <laughs> but Generally, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to complain with wealth smugglers in the game because you're like, well, I need this, <laughs> you know, I can't deal with with these dragons without some uh, some some high attack minions. So, yeah, I'm okay with it right now. Um, but yeah, uh, good card. Moving on, we have dazzling light spawn, Nomi light. You know, as I like to, I just made that up right now. But, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe this is even better than Nomi. Like this is Nomi Plus. Like it's 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 Nomi Light, but Nomi Plus because uh, it, it's a four mana four five CK earlier earlier than Nomi has better stats than Nomi and buffs quicker than Nomi. Uh, probably. I mean, maybe not if you get good hits but you know argue golden version buffs better than regular nomi that's for sure so <laughs> i'll give you that much but yeah definitely um for some reason i don't see this and nomi in the same board uh for some reason like i see people like i guess because i mean you get it on four so you're like why bother going to nomi and then you you want to trigger the event as much as possible so you're running death rattles i guess um and, and whatnot but i think it's playable i've seen a lot of like big big elementals that really were uh, fundamentally skilled through this card so i i think it it, it helps the nomi comp especially if you are running both i haven't seen that but i assume it exists and um just uh there's some cool synergies as well as shady mentioned with eating minions in your tavern so uh there's definitely there's definitely a lot to think about here yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, I think the interesting thing with mm, cutting out. Okay, I'll just switch out of push to talk after this. But I, I think the real interesting thing here is how long are you keeping the father in in the front that proxy event, and when are you swapping to actual big elementals? Because the moment you swap to bigger elementals, you're going to have um, just less scaling. Right. That is that is um that's a good question that I don't have the answer to right now because I haven't played with this much. I pl I played it once and I died, <laughs> so uh, that's not yeah. a great experience. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be the tricky part, right? You you can look at it as um, I, I think the coin lady is a good example for these avenge minions in general, where they have their time where they scale and then at some point you need to get out of it uh, not necessarily out of the avenge minion in this case but out of the minions that enable the avenge minion because you're gonna you're gonna be scaling way faster if you have a bunch of those imps in the front that just keep making more bodies or have acolytes that just dies but then you're not gonna be winning your fights for a very long time if you've been running imps and acolytes so you need to put some of these big elementals on the board but then the big elementals they don't die 
So then you stop getting adventures and then, you know, me scaling slows down. So yeah, maybe this is something where you hit it really early, you milk it for a bit and then use a switch to putting bigger elementals on the board. And then maybe you just try to get either a Nomi in or you switch it into something like we talked about the demons that starts consuming the elementals in the tavern. Cause I don't think you can keep scaling with this thing safely. You're going to have to switch into some stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 have to run this, but also have like I, I've seen like if you get like one golden elemental, like that can like solo people's boards, especially that there's less people running um uh poison scams or anything like that. Like one, two good, like hundred plus elementals, right? Like that that might be all you need and you can just like fill the rest of your board with like minions to proc the event, so there's definitely potential there, as uh, at least now. I don't know how it will be in the future. Like maybe people start running more poison to, in the future, right? People will start liking the Murloc more. I mean, I still see it a little bit, but it's not like oppressive or common, right? It's because everyone's just going dragons anyway, so like no one's doing anything else. Um, but uh, I, I, I mean. I've seen it work, I guess, and it, it looks interesting to me. I I hadn't made it work myself, but I've seen other people make it work, and at least it's it's theoretically viable in my opinion. So we we we'll just have to see for sure. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to see in the future. Uh, next card we have recycling wrath. I gotta say I've never seen this card played. I I don't know. I I I don't know. I've I've not seen it really on anyone's board or or anything like that. I think it's like theoretically good. Like it's like a Nomi um, supplement, right? You have a Nomi and then every uh, elemental gives you refresh. You can roll into more elementals, right? Like, but I don't know. I just don't see people play with it. Um, OP with Millhouse though, but other than that, you know, yeah, not too sure. It's, it's one of those things where if you get it early, especially when you golden it and you just have it as a big body, you keep it. If it's sure. golden, it's next two refreshes, cause zero. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next two. Okay. Because what what I had was in that gem this game, I had the goldens, and I was just playing one elemental roll, roll one elemental. But basically, I never spent the gold for actual rolling. for rolling. Yeah. That's kind of good, right? Yeah, not yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Not having to pay for a single roll for the next, you know, the rest of the game. But that's we're talking ideal conditions. We're talking tier six access to the mool brand on the board. You can play, you know, the four four that spawns elementals in the shop. You can play the four four that puts elementals in your hand. So uh, it's not to say, oh, when you golden this, you've paid your last gold for the roll. Like no more gold for Bob. Only paying for those minions. It's not like that. <laughs> it, you can create that situation, uh, and then it's kind of good. It's just like this power. But you do need to have a slot for it because sometimes you'll have a Reaper that you want to buff, you'll have a Malgadon, you'll have the Rag, and where do you really find the board space? So I don't think this is something you transition into, but if you somehow had it early, sure, right? And then it just soaked some buffs and it's big, it can stay. But I don't think this is a core unit for the for most elemental comps, but hey, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, theoretically, you you run it with Nomi. I think that one makes sense. And then theoretically, you'd also run it, I guess, with like double double little rag, right? Maybe I just like you just want to run roll into like big tier six elemental, so you just have a copy of this. Two of these wouldn't work on the board, right? Like I assume that does nothing. Shouldn't. Yeah, so it, it's not something you can like run to. You just have to run one. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anyone play with it, but. Theoretically, it should be playable. Right? I'm not saying like it's unplayable or anything like that. I just haven't seen it myself, but it uh, seems okay. Um, next card we're talking about is Masters of Reality. Okay, I have not seen this card either, to be honest. It's just because just like, it's not an elemental, right? Like It's not an elemental, and then it doesn't scale as fast as a gar. So Either. this this card is also bugged in uh, that. Oh, is it? Okay. At, yeah, I've I've seen bigger masters of realities, and this should be possible. Okay. Uh, so I think it does the same thing where you have like molten rock or party elemental stacks, and then this thing suddenly just like boom, big ass buff. Um, so I'm not exactly sure if they'll be addressing that. If it's something that is super super where people are super aware of. I definitely had this one person which is like, 
obscenely early 1990 master of realities where i'm like yeah okay buddy 1990 or, or 1919 no no 9090 oh, okay so yeah right you're like you do the math and you're like, how do you that? how do you play 84 elementals that's a lot of buffs right yeah. yeah that's a lot of buffs so i think oh that's after the, uh, friendly elemental gain stats have i not read this card properly oh <laughs> uh, right yeah so I do, think, I do think that there's absolutely a place for this so i think if you have um a setup where you have party elemental and you have molten rock ooh, right suddenly any elemental you play uh. it, it triggers on the party elemental it triggers on the molten rock uh ping pong really really well i have not uh, read this card properly apparently okay. <laughs> it's a great first step to you know learning the expansion is reading the cards <laughs> but yeah I, I think this is a this this card okay. works worse with rag than guarded, but it, 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 it interacts a lot better with the lower tier elementals, which is a bit weird because I feel like when I play tier six elementals, I want to be able to just put the rags on the board and then like put this master of realities on the board and it just feels underwhelming because it's like plus one plus one every time I give something stats with my rag. It just doesn't feel like it's fast enough. And it's also not a gar, so it doesn't, it's not an elemental itself, so it doesn't slap that plus six plus six or plus 12 plus 12 on the board when I play it with the rags. So yeah, a bit of an awkward position where you want to have lower tier elementals on the board, like party elemental molten rock, but those things rarely go together with rags. So it's just weird. The reason I haven't read this card is because I haven't seen it in game. And the reason I haven't seen it in game is because dragons are the line. So who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but, sure. but yeah, theoretically, I guess it might be playable. Um, but the fact that it's not elemental kind of irks me honestly like I'm, I'm really sad that they yeah i just like where's my guard just please yeah. let me play guard instead of this thing yeah I'd, let me play guard. I'd much rather have a guard than this like you you think they're replacing it because they want to like make a cooler unit but this just feels like a sadder version of the guard that we're yeah, yeah like i was so i i made a complete 180 on guard right gar was garbage where i was just like oh, <laughs> i don't want to play him ever <laughs> And then, you know, I learned how to tier to six safely or sometimes not so safely and just do an elemental pivot. And it's it's one of the most satisfying feelings in the game, in my opinion, is being strong or strong enough to go to six. Then you just go holding, holding a rag, holding a gar, holding a mole, and then just have that turn. Boom, elementals. And then you just pop off. And, and gar was a big part of that because at the end of that transition turn, you had 70, 80 health gars already. And, and they carry, they did a lot of work and that's just not going to be as viable anymore. Yeah. You know, same, same feeling as like double hogger, you know, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, double hogger has a special place in my heart. I sure. know it does. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely. I think a weird card. I haven't seen it too much, but it might be played, but it's just not an elemental. I'm not in love with this card, just on a theoretical side. I, I looked at it, and apparently looked at it once, looked at it wrong, and never went back to check because I never saw it in the game. So, you know, it, it apparently bugged, but I didn't know that because I never saw it in the game. <laughs> but, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh, if, if people want to play with this a little bit more afterwards, after they um, change whelps, hopefully. But yeah, that's moving on. Last but not least, I believe we have mechs to talk about. Mechs are in an interesting place. First thing, we've got Puppbot, one of the cutest tier ones they've added in the game in recent memory. Very cute little doggy with device shield. Two one attack. I like it. <laughs> just the just the design though. Uh, early divine shields, I, I think are something you have to be careful of uh, uh just because if you can have a divine shield that can uh, stick around get stronger etc etc that can be really problematic and that you you can have a game plan on one right also like daryl right got that revamp right this is definitely a good target i'm actually happy they gave another divine shield target to daryl because daryl was you know they it, he, they he used to have the um the one one taunt right but then they they removed that uh but now they yeah. added pup but pup is a better version because now you can like you get a pup and then you get a menace right it's, it's it has a, it has mech synergy now so 
you yeah, can just you can catch it up there yeah. yeah you can get it early and then just like be like oh i'll just find menace or a normal module and put it on there so it just really really helps their own gameplay it's just like no one's doing that because of dragons but you know i i think there would be really happy to see this and um there are some uh heroes that buff um that their hero power buffs things right like so like um van van cleaver or something right maybe you make this like a six three early that's that's cobalt guardian right like oh i like that card so uh <laughs> definitely has some potential just that kind of due to whelps and things like that it, it, you're not seeing a lot of people really abuse this card right now but i think it's a good card and then i'm okay right now with divine shield early like uh so I, i'm not i'm not too sad about it yeah it's it's something to help out the tempo boys and right now uh we know they need it <laughs> so there's not much there's not that many reasons to, to play something like an ender, and this, this helps you out so overall super fine with it it's one of those cards where you could take a stand where you're like oh you know it's too it's too easy now for daryl to, to go big but Honestly, between Shutterwalk still not being fixed because tokens are still in and, you know, smugglers going off. I, I've maybe had one or two boards where I'm just like, oh, damn, that's early, right? Where I have this huge Divine Shield in it. Um, but yeah, you just don't notice it other than that. I, 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 I think um, Tempo needs something anyways, right? Because right now the meta is just like get get stupid things, or, you know. Get scaling, scale, yeah. scale, 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 yeah. scale. So... I don't mind. I don't mind the introduction of this at the moment. Uh, yep. In another world, this could be a problem, <laughs> but not this yeah. one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Does and, it deal three hundred damage? No, not enough. No, no, no. Yeah. Next one. Uh, Mechano tank is is that right? Am I? Is that is that the next highest? We go from that's one to four. Jump. Yeah, that's a big jump. Let me just check, make sure I'm not missing any random. Uh, random mech here i'm thinking about it but no i don't think so i think this it's is a of, it's a lot of high tier stuff here yeah it, it looks it looks yeah it looks like there's a lot of high tier stuff so yeah apparently we go straight from one to four they just uh they just skipped two and three for mechs they were happy with deflector they're happy with menace what's on two what what mechs on two they're happy with uh Leaper. Leaper and the uh, the two three harvest going. Yeah, so yeah. they're like, okay, let's just go straight. I think everyone was happy with those, right? So, yeah. I mean, uh, most yeah, people. Yeah. Harvest going, I think, could use something. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's one of those cards. I never hate buying it on two. I was just like, yeah, it's gonna win fights. It's gonna be a reset. Yeah, you know, if it doesn't win you the game, should you? <laughs> I think it's not a well smuggler. This is it, it. Doesn't have both. Death Rattle and Reborn, you know. But whenever, whenever a friendly mech gains attack, you give it plus two health. That's what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Clear. <laughs> Reworking it, baby. Uh, okay, but uh, Mechano Tank Avenge two deal six damage to the highest health enemy minion. So because of Whelp Smuggler, this thing is so funny looking because <laughs> it just you're hitting like a two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so that's that's been my experience whenever I see, <laughs> I see someone with this card and just like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. A lot of HP. Yeah. yeah. I, I've played this. I've actually done well with it in, in some lobbies, but dragons need to be out. Yeah. Like right. this is this is Soul Juggler essentially, and Soul Juggler suffers hugely when people can build a lot of health, right? When when the Quillboard patch hit, the the norm for how much health you'd have on a board just went up. The average amount of health per board went up. Uh, just yeah, because yeah. You could do things with Charlie, Flatless Gagan was super consistent and super super good for buffing your board. So Soul Trigger was actually kind of okay up until that patch. And and I think this guy suffers from the same problem where if you huh. are if if you can easily add health to your board something that deals a static amount of damage isn't it's just not very good you know what if you know what you made me think about this is actually just juggler yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's just like, juggler I was, yeah i i had this 
in in a comp and then at some point i had just pure demons and it's like now it's actually just juggler <laughs> stuck to my stream because it's, it's actually kind of good with you yeah right? yeah yeah because yeah. i mean loose flash juggler was designed to be played with demons yeah. so yeah it turns out if you play the mech juggler it, they, there's a crossover option you can play it with demons it's just juggler yeah i've been playing demons i could just look for this instead i'd like i haven't played with the card at all right so are you just like <laughs> Oh, I just run this good. instead. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's interesting. A good tempo option. It's yeah. a good tempo. The same way that sometimes people catch you off guard with a juggler on the board, and you're like, "Damn, that's a lot of tempo early." The same thing can happen with this guy. They're just like, "Damn, that's a lot." You know, two tanks in the back, and then they have Acolyte and Menace on their front mechs, and it's just like, you know, endless stream of little dudes, and you're just like, "Yep, that's way too much damage from the back lane." Huh. Interesting, you know, because like juggler, I'm like, I still kind of pick up jugglers sometimes. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. but yeah, you could just run this instead of jugglers. It's actually better, right? Since you don't have to, you're not locked into demons, right? It, and it's every minion, yeah. So. But I'm okay with that since it's a tier four versus like a tier three. Like, okay, whatever. I'm not... Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think this is too strong. Yeah. Like, I, I really liked playing it on Zephyrus because I knew then I could easily make it golden and then. The, the main thing with juggler is it takes a board space yeah. so golden juggler is so much better than two jugglers yeah yeah for sure so huh you've uh you've changed my opinion on this card you know just call it a juggler and i'm like oh you know what <laughs> that's actually good <laughs> but yeah uh apparently playable if you like juggler composition so uh, once webs are out hopefully or welps are adjusted where it's not like where it is i i think you'll see more of this so i'm i'm okay with it at the moment um next mech we're moving on to grease spot so this replaced a sensei and it's just so much better than sensei and it makes me sad you know uh and you can run this in non mech comps which i think is pretty honestly weird you know like Maybe if this said if as a after a friendly mech loses divine shield, I would be like okay, like. But right now you just run in everything that that has mech that has uh, divine shield value because like yeah. even even one proc is good. Like okay, one proc I'll get like plus two plus one. Yeah, I mean, pretty solid, you, right? You start to look at this permanent shaker board where everything is getting gemmed every turn, but only one proc, right? And then. The cool thing is they get to keep the health as well so it's it's yeah like i when you have this in the the dream right like we're going to be talking about mackerel in a moment if you have a mackerel with a module uh in the back line and you have a bunch of divine shields in the front it's just ping pong where they hit the mackerel plus two plus one then one of your divine shields refreshes the mackerel they hit the mackerel again plus two plus one <laughs> then you get refreshed they hit the mackerel again and it's just like you get this silly, what is it, like, uh, plus 10, plus 5 minimum or, or so per round on your macro. It's just, holy shit. Yeah. As Crazy. Well, uh, yeah. So much potential. Yeah, as well as your deflectors getting buffed too, right? And they yeah. get resets too. Like, it's just they like, ah, oh, it's so good. You know, so. But then you, you run it in, like, non mech comps too like that's the thing too right it's not like just a mech card. You, you just you turn it into a Divine Shield comp. Like, you just play Whirlies and stuff. Yeah. Or what do you mean? I don't know. Just any, any, any like bronze warden, like whatever. You just put, put any divine. Yeah, what I what I mean is, you, you kind of just turn it into a divine shield comp then, where you just put divine shield. In it. Like I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you pull this early, you can build around it where you don't have to be mechs, right? You, you could just like, oh, I'll just buy a whirly, I'll buy a bronze warden, and I'll put it on the board. But I think a lot of the time, this is just the like a mech card where you're mechs in and you're looking for this. But I, I do see if you pick it up early, you can just put whichever divine. Yeah, but I mean, board. you you can use it for tempo while you're leveling. Like, let's say yeah. you have like a like two bronze wardens in this, and you're just like, okay, I'll just go to. I mean, you can have two bronze wardens and you're good. Yeah, to I, know, I know, but like but it's yeah, it's even better. You're, you're really good to level <laughs> right, like, straight to tier seven with that combo. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's just useful. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a strong minion. It's a very strong minion. And then noise me, you know, like it's too. Your boy sensei died for this. Yeah, 
it annoys me. I'm I'm a, I'm a little salty, I guess, with this card here. But uh, it's a great card, very strong, very useful, very flexible. A little bit too strong in my opinion. Maybe it would be better if it was only max, right? It, like it still has most of its power, but you can't just like put it on everything. Uh, which you can do right now, like especially like George, right? Like you have George in, and you're just like, oh, okay, well, that's that's Greece itself. Well, does it work? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, yeah. So yeah, it, I mean, if a friendly minion loses divine shields, so you can just, or do you mean like can it buff itself? Or? Yeah, I assume it buffs itself if it has divine shield on it. I would assume so, but I'm not sure. Because they would say minion. after another friendly minion, right? Like that's that oh, the right. right. So it, yeah, that would be the blizzards. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, you just like you just I like I haven't played George with this. That's why I'm like theor theorize theorizing, but I assume it'd work on itself. So. Yeah, let's take an arm arm comp to the next level with this thing. Yeah, so, yeah. It's it's arm comp already. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> as George, you're like, oh yes, yeah. playing Grease comp. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's so oh, greasy, yeah. Oh man, like George doesn't even need to hit the module, right? Just yeah. the Argus to count the mackerel is enough. Right? Yeah. Oh god, brutal. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> yeah, there's disgusting things, that, you know, and and it's all just not a problem right now because we're running around. Yeah, three, yeah, three like no one right. cares about this. <laughs> when, when that fire is put out, there's gonna be a lot of like, oh, the couch was also a fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. oh man yeah we we did predict this right yeah right. there were gonna be massive changes things were gonna be busted and they were gonna have to do a nerf round a minimum right minimum one nerf round Whew. all right good stuff yeah it's gonna get the guff treatment i'm already i'm already prophesizing here <laughs> yeah plus one plus one probably yeah, yeah. uh but uh good this is a good, good card. Probably gonna become a problem after Welp is gone, but for now, you know, no one cares because Welp's in the game. But yeah, I could see it becoming a problem uh, a lot later on. Uh, next card we were talking about here is Macro. Did they not learn from the last time they <laughs> added this card? Did they not learn? I do not understand why it's, it's still in the same thing. iteration. You it has. What is it, Collins? It's totally. I, d I don't get it. Why is it still just the same card? They didn't change anything. You can still have two of them. You still you can still go infinite like BS if you have two ton. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't get it at all. Why they still didn't? They did not change it in any fundamental way where there's like some counterplay at all. I just, uh, frustrating, actually. I don't get it. I'm 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 tired. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's my experience. Like no one cares right now because of whelps, but man, it's gonna be annoying once whelps are gone and, and you just see people just run this comp all day. <sighs> um, anyway, uh, it, it might increase the value of Wind Fury, where I think a lot of people will have this setup where it's okay, just one mackerel taunted. That's gonna be very common if people are trying to set this up, and one Wind Fury can kill this right if you if you get an amalgadon or let's say you're playing like major domo with the whirly in the front you can take out imagine person. having five copies of this i'm just saying just imagine <laughs> like I, I, I just like oh my god stop it you sure. know like, <sighs> <sighs> hate this card remove it i'm tired i don't want to see it like don't like not remove it but like make it not the, like change the way it works just, just make it not reset you know just make it uh, i don't know how do you want to change this yeah i know right that's the question uh it's, it's just the the whole identity of the card is what it, you can go with them with okay it. don't make it a mech and say after a friendly mech loses divine shield so you can't chain it with itself i guess sure yeah that then maybe i i can see that uh don't make it a mech and after a friendly mech loses the void shield then like, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of with you where i i think it would have been just better had they not printed it right yeah it feels like you're gonna have to jump through a lot of hoops to make this a lot less frustrating 
but but Mex need like I I I'm okay with Mex need something in the late game to like have some type of you know late game potential scaling. Yeah, okay, whatever. But not this one. Like ah, uh, not this iteration. You know, like Blizzard uh, make Mech uh, late game viable. No, not like that. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> okay. So yeah, TLDR, holy mackerel, very good. If you can have a board of divine shields and a grease spot, this thing is just. Whew, right, takes it to a whole next level where you can just murder. You can murder the entire comp without losing a minion with this. This minion can solo, you know, like 1v7. Well, not really 1v7 because he doesn't need his buddies to reset the shield, but pretty much like six cheerleaders in the macro will take out the enemy team. <laughs> uh. <sighs> <I'd>, uh... <laughs> I I was so frustrated with holy macros in the game, dude. I was so tilted from the card, and I was like, "Yes, they removed it." You know, once they were, they said they were gonna remove. It. I was like, "Yeah, okay." And then I come, I come read the patch notes. And I'm like, "What's what's what going doing? on? Like, <laughs> like, what is this?" The, you know, and then, and then I go play the game. Like, I was like, "Okay, let me play." And then it's like the same thing. It's like ah. Maybe that's why they made Dragon so P and they gave it the ping thing. So like, okay, it's fine. Nobody's gonna be playing it anyway. I mean, we'll just force we'll just make them force dragons every game. <sighs> and it's a five drop. Like uh I just like <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually I'm I'm like I'm okay with it being a five to be fair. It's just like I'm I would I I'm 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 actually like okay if, if it didn't reset itself right like if it's not a mech and mechs reset it then at least it doesn't you can't just run like three of them and then just have infinite like RNG value of just killing everything you know and imagine you have a grease bot there too you're just like oh yeah plus two plus one you know you end you end the turn against like a, a, a like a 500 health whelp and your things have a hundred attack now because you've been lucky <laughs> like it's like okay that's that's uh that's not really you know good game design there but yeah I, I would I would definitely love to see some adjustments with this card as well I mean there's a lot of cards that kind of need adjustment just generally but uh, put this one in there too, you know. Put put it in there too. I I I want it adjusted or gone. Either either way is fine. But um, I believe we have one more card as well, right? We have um. Yeah, it's actually a fun one. Like the one that's yeah, up next. Yeah, yeah, Omega Buster. I yeah. I, I this is a cool card. No, so I would you know I've been like last last card. Let's pretend doesn't exist. Yeah, 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 I wasn't like tilted or anything. <laughs> oh my God, was, this card's cool. <laughs> this card is very interesting to design. You know, I, I, I don't think there's a card that has like this kind of particular design. Like, really, um, cares about board space. Like, I mean, there's a lot of cards that care about board space, but uh, each one that doesn't fit give you max plus one plus one, so you can play it multiple ways. Right? I think most people are playing it where you want you want nothing to spawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you can also do it where, you, like, the minions, the mech, the one one micro buffs get the buff too, right? So, like, if you summon yeah. six and one doesn't fit, then you have a bunch of two twos. If you summon a uh, five, you know, if they don't fit, then you have a bunch of three threes. That's actually like kind of relevant, uh, too. So it's pretty cool. Also has some synergies with some of the other um cards. I I heard someone say it. It synergizes with Kanger. I, I haven't confirmed that, but that would be really interesting. But it does synergize with Baron. Where... What, do you mean? what do you mean? Do you mean Cadgar? Yeah, Cadgar. Kanger, Cadgar oh. are the same card to me. Yeah, well, no. Kangor is great with this because you just summon it back. Right? So <laughs> I, I had a really... Yeah, that's why I was confused. So I, had a, I had a really nice comp where I had uh, Omega Buster and then two Kangors and the Baron. I was like, Mwah! it's just so many stats uh, i i can't confirm whether cadgar works with it or not but i can confirm that if you put more microbots in it with a menace it does not increase the number okay yeah that's that's what i thought technically, technically it should work because they're called microbots right on the menace so it was like you know but no it doesn't work oh yeah you, what that should that should be cool that should work. Yeah, that should work. You're that would... microbots. Yeah. Right? So it says for each that doesn't fit. Fit. Yeah. You're right. That's, that's, that's messed up. They've. That's a huge design flaw that they've missed. Like you a know. Flavor thing, yeah, right? it's, it's a, a huge. Flavor. Yeah. 
Because you have the micro bots and then you put three more. Maybe it's too strong. No, no, who cares? I'm tired. I'm tired of Dragon Meta. This was on your Buster, right? Suddenly, that's on With Baron, I know. Plus 15, plus 15. I know. Plus 30, plus 30. I know. It's a little silly. It does get a little silly. And again, you know, when you play Parrot Goldren, when you gold and stuff, that gets very silly as well, right? Apparently, this used to have um, magnetize on it in in Ooh. their in their testing yeah <laughs> but apparently it was yeah. too strong so they yeah, they it nerfed like it omega busted right? <laughs> 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 yeah uh but yeah, yeah. Then you can put it like on an egg and then nothing spawns right you're like oh, plus six plus six yeah <laughs> so a uh, pretty cool card i, I like it okay so i said the uh the other dragon was like interesting this one would also fit in um like an in interesting design. I think this one would also be there too. Um, as well as like the, um, the eating, the eating consume mechanic, I think is also pretty interesting as well. So those, those are the three, the top three, uh, interesting mechanics, I think from, uh, this, uh, minion reroll. But I, I think that, I think this card's good. Opens up a lot of, um, skit, like, tempo it's not it's not scaling right because you can't scale with it but you can you can definitely heavy tempo with it um i, I think you can, uh, like it's it's yeah. like a gold ring, right you put you can taunt it put a norm watch on it put it in the front or something I, I think the most common thing is where i pull this and i'm just like i don't have enough mechs on the boards but that's the same thing as gold room right you check for beasts because some boards you're just like oh wow if i get this this is gonna go straight in this is so good yeah so Pretty cool card. Uh, I don't have like anything too bad to say here. Like, yeah. I think just in general, you know, if we're, if we're done talking about the cards, the um, like it's cool that they uh, took chances and that they switched things up, and that's that's how you, you know, continue refining your product, your your game. I just really hope that we're gonna get a good follow. <laughs> That's, that's my fear because I will say that I was really enjoying myself in the previous meta. I really didn't think that that one needed to completely die right now to each their own. Some people say, oh, it was too boring or this or that. But I, I thought, it, you know, up until they just for some reason made Shredder Walk and not address tokens, up until that point, I thought it was actually a really beautiful meta. It was really, it f felt like I could really learn and, um, uh, and, and thrive in that and and right now it's you know it's chaos right it's like that, that, <laughs> that nice i guess what i'm trying to say is there was this beautiful rhythm to the previous meta where i had it figured out and i was just like okay here i need to level here and into this and this is more just like ah oh, where's the broken chain let me play that broken chain and you know like once that once the smoke clears up i just hope that we go back to that cool rhythm and you know that we do not get all these other problems where the damage cap uh and like the other cards we talked about that might become problematic once uh the initial threat of the whelp has been addressed yeah that's how i felt um the first like right before the first time they made like a big change and like that i think they that was like the meta before they added dragons and i was like ah everything's perfect like i know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep this one for yeah. a couple months yeah, yeah. And then they changed everything and i'm like ah panic yeah uh so yeah well i mean that that is the nature of some of these games sometimes especially when they want to make big changes right it's just yeah, like, yeah you gotta follow man you gotta follow so i'm, I'm definitely i'm looking forward to figuring it all out but it, it it does feel a bit weird right now because it does feel like you're you're learning something that's just gonna be not completely different. Yeah, in a couple I, days, I, hopefully a couple days. Yeah, I, I mean, last thoughts are gonna be the overall uh, initial thoughts, you know, of uh, sure. the patch. But you know, we all know <laughs> the initial thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's well smuggler meta right now. Um, and pretty much everyone's doing that. If dragons are in, then maybe you kind of see like a, a, a sminkle of how the game actually will or be played out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Dragons are out. Yeah, or out. yeah. You you might see how it actually be played, but dragons will still be in, right? That's the thing, right? Even when uh, whelps get changed, right? So you, you 
the meta might still be dragons, right? Uh, in in a sense, so we actually don't know for sure. But initially, you know, like it's cool to see the new changes. the The issue is like people are getting better. People know what's broken, and people are just doing the broken thing. So it feels like if you're not doing the broken thing, you're 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 do, you're playing wrong, right? So it 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 doesn't feel like you're playing the game in a sense. Like you're you're playing. A uh, whelp, uh, you know, whelp generator, whelp farmland. I don't whelp know. simulator. Yeah, whelp yeah. simulator. Exactly. Whelp, yeah. whelp rolling simulator. Like, oh, come on. Yeah, I, I really hate where you just have that thing where you just because I feel like I changed the way how I play the game. I, I guess maybe I can like put it in that way where I'm gonna be honest where. I was on for hard forcing arm or you know those other like tempo comps uh -huh. that feels like such an ugly way to play the game compared to sort of that beauty of <laughs> making the most out of what you were handed and then trying to be as strong as you can be then level and then figure it out like i've made a complete 180 on that where i feel like that is a beautiful way to play the game and and it's very very different when some cards are just too powerful where you don't have the option of oh just level and figure it out if level and figure it out is not the correct way to play the game, then it becomes, oh, I guess I'm just hard rolling for these few cards. And then there's a lot less room to separate you from the other people because the other people can also click the whelp smuggler and buy it and play it and put it on the board. And uh, you know, if that is what you need to do to be successful, there's just less things you can do to separate yourself as a high level player, uh, making the most out of boards and then being able to level and make it work. So that, that would be the thing where I really hope that we're not going to get these super powerful early game cards that you just by default looking for because it just yeah it changes the game a lot yeah i mean um i'm in agreement you know that's my play style you know i've always been like that <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. i was just like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming all ah, <laughs> but yeah I, I definitely uh feel you I definitely think the thoughts will change when Well Slugger is gone, but right now it's hard to it's hard to really even analyze the game in a fundamental aspect with this card and just kind of break being bugged and breaking any semblance of what is strong. Like everything you're thinking about is strong. You're comparing to Dragon Comp or, or Well Smugglers and it's hard to be like, oh, is is Juggler is actually good. Well, I don't know. I can I kill two hundred health minions? No. Okay. Well, maybe not. Not today, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when it got maybe the and and buffs being a, a little bit more streamlined or nerfed, right? I do think um, just health has gone up over time, right? So jugglers have been struggling a little bit, right? But with with uh, like they've added more things to give you more. Uh, instances of juggler procs right that's like been the way to like counteract the extra health you've getting more procs right but then it, it does feel like if you have the juggler comp and you don't have the the nut scaling you get blown out destroyed you, that's when you're taking the 15 every turn but then if you do have the scaling then you destroy the juggler and then they're taking 15 right so you've got that you've got that ground where oh i'm jugglers and i'm good and you feel strong then the next guy destroys you <laughs> and you're just like what what's going on right because it's it's such a huge like that one turn difference of oh i have that one turn of scale oh i've gained 70 hp and stats well pff, this juggler does nothing anymore versus the previous turn oh i i don't have the stats yet oh i destroy that same guy, but now they've they scaled one turn. Now I'm, I have no chance, right? So uh, that does definitely feel weird when you're playing that type of competition. But um, overall, you know, interesting designs. Uh, I'm not particularly sure what's good because dragons are just dominating. But overall, maybe next week or whenever they adjust or go with their set of nerfs or adjustments, we'll be able to tell more of what's going to be prevalent in the meta but yeah that's that's going to be my initial yep sounds about right just uh gotta wait it out right yeah. gotta go down to the pub have a nice little pint and wait yeah. until the blow's over ah <laughs> uh, yes there you are back for some more no no i don't <laughs> think i am <laughs> uh anyways uh that will be it for today i believe 
Yeah, this is a long one. I knew it was going to be over two hours, but, you know, not too bad. So imagine us doing all of them, right? I don't have time for that today, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, we'll try to see if we can cover most, if not all of the other changes next um, next week. Uh, I, I'm actually not 100% sure, sure I'll be back by next week. I'm traveling to visit my brother, so... Um, I don't know exactly the time frame when I'm coming back. So, you know, maybe it might be longer than a week, but might not be. So I, I'm not 100% sure. But theoretically, it's actually just going to wait until it blows over. <laughs> it's going to be back. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, you know, if, if I am. um, um mm. Actually, I, I don't know. I might take my um, I might take my computer. So maybe maybe we'll see. But um, not not. Not every, I don't know. I don't know my schedule yet, so we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, theoretically, sure. let's just pretend I'm back. So, you know, next week we'll cover the rest of it and everything we'll will be great. It. Yeah, we'll, we'll make, make it work it. for sure. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, this first look at some of the changes. I think we covered most of the important minion types that are in, right? Like, I, I skipped Beast, but I thought, I, I like, I think Beast survival, right? But I was like, ah, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, Murlocs, I haven't really seen too many. I think the poison one is playable, and then you poison the Malgadon, right? Like, that's what I've seen. But you know, it's not like anything fancy to talk I mean, about there. But if, if, for it's squeezing that in there, I think the five five guy to make the Merlot golden is actually really good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to squeeze whatever, like go for it. Like, there's a lot. Just like just like tier six gaming, that feels so good. Where you're just like every time you buy that one, it's a triple. Because yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. zap a Murloc in the shop. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, if you like, you can make a golden Amalgadon. <laughs> you can make a golden Lookout. You can make a golden Begurgle, right? So it's not just the discovery. So when you have a brand, oh, I like, I've, done, I've done some cool stuff on tier six, just juggling those fish guys and just turning primal fins and Amalgadon's golden. Uh, you can do some cool stuff for sure. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of other things that we didn't cover, but we're definitely going to cover them next week, hopefully. And um Goofy, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and we know where you want to find us. It's where we are. <laughs> and uh, da 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 uh, da 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 we'll see. Today, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> find us where we are, of course. Yeah, Why would they get looking where we're not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, we'll see you guys uh, later on. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, and um, that's all I got. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Have a good one, everyone.